town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting at 6 p.m. Trevor, do you mind reading um, the link? Hey, Carolyn, one sec. Uh, can you hold a moment? Because um, I was trying to get sort out these two links. No problems, Trevor. Resistance motion. They were two different meetings. Okay, good. Um, it's so. for the seven o'clock hearing. Uh, yes. Appearance. Okay, then, so. Then, excuse me, Trevor, the personnel board should open their meeting too then? Call it to uh, order? Yes, they, they could if, you, if you'd like. Yeah, or, or you could wait till seven until, um, you know, until the presentation's there. The Mary agenda Carson. says six. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you, you can go ahead. I'll, uh, I'll read this and, and open the meeting and then, and then you can go ahead and do, do yours as well if you'd like. So uh, right on. <clears throat> welcome to the Select Board Board of Health meeting for May 5th, 2021. Um, meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12th, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20. Meetings are typically broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television, which it is tonight. Um, remote meeting connections are listed on our agenda, which can be found at the Town of Deerfield's uh, website. If you go down to the right by the calendar, you'll see our current meetings for today. You could click on those links, get a hold of our agenda, and you'll see a um, a Zoom meeting link there. Uh, people watching on TV on FCAT that wanted to call in and have a comment, you can dial in 312-626-6799. Uh, um, the, the meeting ID is 911-604-1580. And should you need a passcode, it's 570012. You can find all this information also on every agenda in the same locations. And um, so just if you're speaking or on the phone, if you're signing on, please mute your phone or, or your tablet. And then um, on landlines, you can hit star six um, to mute and unmute. Um, so uh, welcome to the meeting. And uh, John, if you, uh, or Ray Loon, if you want to open your meeting as well, you're more than welcome to. Thank you, Trevor. Um, first item on the agenda is the select board reorganization. Um, so Dave, um, is now, um, well, I guess I'd make a motion to appoint Dave as chair of the Board of Selectmen. I would second that motion. Um, Dave, do you want to comment on that? Oh, I look forward to serving the town in this new role. Uh, it's uh, exciting. Um, you know, we have a lot going on and uh, it's, it should be a very interesting year for the town of Deerfield. Yes, thank you. All those in favor? Yes, thank you. All those in favor? Dave Wolf, aye. aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. So Dave, I'm turning the mo meeting over to you. Okay, uh, I would like to make a motion now to uh, kind of a reorganization of the Board of Selectmen, Board of Health. And um, I would like to appoint Carolyn Ness as the chair of the Board of Health. I'll, I'll second that motion. We have any further discussion? Other than that, she, uh, I can't think of anybody better suited to chair the Board of Health. And I thank her for all of her work over the last year. Um, so yeah. very happy to support yeah. that. To continue the continuity of the uh, COVID issues that we've had and everything else, mm -hmm. I feel it's essential that, uh, that we keep that one key person in place yep. and not switch that up. And uh, because she has done an excellent job for the town of Deerfield and has led us through uh, a lot of this crisis and we're coming out on the other side of it a lot better than we were <laughs> mm -hmm. and a lot better than a lot of other communities. Yeah. Thank you very much. I um, really appreciate all the support I've been getting from both of you though. It, you know, this has really been a team effort. It has been seven days a week, but it, you know, it's all of us emergency meetings, reading material, going to other meetings, it's, it's been a lot of work and I, I appreciate your support. So thank you.
All those in favor? Dave Wolf from I. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn Ness, I. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Carolyn. Uh, John, did you uh, call your meeting to order or are you going to wait? Um, Ray, it's up to Ray Lou and she's the chairperson. But I don't, there's only two of us here that I can see. Okay. Yeah, I, I we're, it's just, it's just John and I here so far. So I can try to get, um, I, I'll contact the other people and see if they're available to come. And it was a little unclear to me if this was, we were observing your meeting or we were joining your meeting. If we also call to order, I'm just not sure of the, the protocol. Well, but the I, reason, reason yeah. we had, had you join us was because of the fact that we, uh, Mary's going to be on at seven o'clock to go over the new comp. And right. we wanted to make sure you're fully informed of everything. Yep. Um, I don't know if there's going to be any required votes. I don't think so tonight. Uh, but we want to make sure everybody's well informed about what's going on and what we're looking at. Right the, now. the agenda, David, the agenda shows the meeting for the personnel board will start at 6 p.m. I don't know if I don't know what we need to do about that, if anything, but. You can wait until you get another member or whatever, until you have a quorum and then, you, you know, we can stop at any time and you can open up. Uh, your meeting is fine, and we just want to make sure that you have any ability to take votes and participate in discussion for sure when we get to seven. All right, thanks. I'll I'll see if I can. I'll, I'll contact some more people, see if I can get a yeah. few more people here, and then we'll just listen in the meantime. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the first thing on our agenda for this evening is the Verizon poll hearing, uh, the site poll on North Main Street. Um, do we have any representatives from Verizon here? Yes, I don't know if you can hear me or not. Yeah. Hi, Don. Hi. Yeah, Don Bonner here representing Verizon on this matter. Don, do you, uh, excuse me, uh, David, do you want me to read the uh, hearing notice? You can if you want, or yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, Town of Deerfield poll hearing. Uh, pursuant to Mass General Law, Chapter 166, Section 22, and any additions thereto or amendments thereof, the Deerfield Select Board will hold a public hearing on May 5th, 2021 at 6 p.m. in the main meeting room of the Municipal Offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass., on the petition of Verizon New England, Inc., and N-Star Electric Company, DBA Eversource Energy for permission to locate poles, wires, cables, and fixtures, including the necessary anchors, guys, and other such sustaining and protecting fixtures to be owned and used in common by your petitioners along and across the following public ways or way or ways, North Main Street, re relocate one jointly owned pole number T dot 292 slash e dot 31 to a point on the westerly side of north main street approximately 803 feet southerly from the center line of captain lathrop drive reason relocate one jointly owned pole on north main street at the request of the town and provide for the transmission and or distribution of intelligence and telecommunications and for the transmission of high and low voltage electric current. Meetings normally held at municipal offices are being held remotely, all with the same information we had at the beginning of our meeting. Okay, um, John, do you have any input on this? Um, I, I can keep it succinct. Uh, I, I believe we're doing this at the request of the, of the town. And I, I think we're just moving it 31 feet north of where it currently exists uh, to, uh, and I don't want to presume uh, from what I understood, it was to get it out of the way of uh, what appears to be another entrance way to the back park areas. But um, that, it's neither here nor there. I, the town was requesting it, so we, we put the motion in place. Okay. Uh, is there any further discussion on this? Uh, I, I don't have any. It look, yeah, again, just looks like it's moving, you know, north a little bit. Um, 
everything seems to be in order. I've reviewed all the stuff, so I, I, I don't have any questions. Okay. I don't have any questions either. Okay. Uh, there's no further discussion. We'll take a vote. Uh, I'll That's make a motion, a motion to, yeah, I'll make a motion to close the public hearing. Oh, well, first, well, is there, I don't know if there's any public comment. We'll wait for any public comment. Error. Oh, yes, go ahead, Kevin. Um, uh, just a quick one. Hey, Don, if you could check your chat for me, please. Uh, Kevin Scarborough, Highway Superintendent. Thank you. Okay. Uh, bear with me here. I've never done this before. Um, sent to, uh, I don't see anything on my chat, Kevin. Uh, is it something I can answer publicly? Can you hear me? Okay? I, I, I'm almost done. Oh, sorry. You'll, okay. you'll, 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 you'll see others. it probably about 30 seconds. Okay. Any other, in the meantime, is there any other public comment? Hearing none, I make a motion that we close the hearing. I'll second that. Any further discussion? Kevin, do you do you um, do you want to keep the hearing open for a few more minutes? Or are you okay? You're good. Okay, so uh, yep, yeah, I'm all good. I, I still can't see anything in chat, Kevin. Um, is it? Oh, here it is. Never mind. I just saw it. Um, all those. I have an issue on ninety-four side road. This is a separate issue. Is that okay? That separate issue. Different okay. area altogether, I presume. Okay, uh, Kevin, uh, I, let me give you my email address, um, and you can we can talk separately about that. I can I can put you in touch with the right people. Is that okay? That would be absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Okay, it's a uh, Donald. Dot Vonner, B is in Victor O N E R at science.com. That's C Y I E N T dot com. And I will, I'll, I'll, I'll get that going tonight after the meeting. Excellent. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Sure, sure thing. Do it. A motion and a second to close. I made the motion, so. Yep, we got a second from Carolyn. Yep. Okay, uh, no further discussion? Nope. Okay. Uh, all oh, in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Okay. Three zero zero. I'm so sorry. Okay. So I, I will make a motion to approve the, um, the uh, movement of the poll pursuant to the hearing we just had. And I'll second that motion. Any further discussion? Nope. Okay. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Motion is carried, Three zero zero. Thank you. Uh, next on our agenda for this evening is Curtis. Thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. Thank, Thank you, Don. Curtis on. I see Chris. So. Hello, oh. can anybody hear me? Yeah. Yes, hello. Hi, I'm on by phone. Um, okay. I'm sorry. I've Got a bad connection on my video and my phone connection doesn't seem that great either, but uh, hopefully you can hear me. We can. Great. Okay. Um, so I didn't hear what you, you had all said, but I'm assuming I'm on for the, uh, the MVP grant. Yes. Okay. Well, tonight I, I want to um, 
bring forward to you um, our next uh, grant application for the uh, fifth round of municipal vulnerability preparedness grants for Deerfield. As you know, we've had uh, four successful previous grants under this program, um, and this year we would like to apply again. We've spent a fair amount of time talking about this and working on this with our um, MVP core group and Green Infrastructure Policy Committee. And uh, Casey and Carolyn and I have, have spent a fair amount of time talking about the uh, scope of work. And what we've arrived at is a um, four-part proposal. Um, the title would be Healthy Soils, Green Infrastructure Policy, and Climate Resiliency Public Engagement in Deerfield. And um, the components of the grant uh, would be to work on implementing the newly adopted green infrastructure policy through our new committee. Uh, that's something you've been all actively engaged with. Uh, we also would be working with Frontier High School and Middle School on a climate science programming and student engagement project that involves um, employing the curriculum that we developed last year with middle and high school classes and also working uh, with students on a climate related project that they might do. Uh, we're talking about having them design some uh, rain gardens and, um, and actually do some plantings in the rain gardens over at the elementary school as an outdoor classroom and then sponsoring a team from Frontier in the Envirothon competition that uh, comes up every every May. Can everybody still hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, the third piece is a healthy soils pilot demonstration project where we'd be working with a company called uh, Regenerative Design to do a town-wide assessment of uh, the types and quality of soils in Deerfield, and then um, looking at how we can better um, protect and manage those soils so that they promote carbon sequestration as part of a solution for climate change. And we'd also be doing a demonstration component where we will work with Deerfield Academy and uh, four of the larger farms in Deerfield to um, actually do an assessment of their soil and make recommendations on how they might better um, manage their soils, again, for, for that same goal of carbon sequestration. And we have, um, thanks to Carolyn, um, folks signed up to participate in that. So we're excited about that piece. There'd also be an outreach component to that and um, a workshop held for farmers and other property owners to talk about the results of that piece. And then the fourth component is uh, public uh, participation and community engagement that would involve having our second large townwide uh, community resilience climate forum. Um, and that would be at Frontier High School, again, like we did um, in 2020. Uh, kind of a similar kind of approach, but uh, opportunity to get our, um, our work and projects back in front of uh, residents and the public. And then setting up a web page on the town's uh, website to um, talk about our climate resiliency work and projects and things that we're, we're moving forward with. So those are the main components. The, um, the total project cost is uh, $66,773. The grant amount is 42201 And the project match is... Uh, Twenty-four thousand five hundred and seventy-two dollars. Um, the um, the match, actually, in terms of the cash match to the town, would be significantly lower than that. It's um, the total is nine thousand five hundred and forty-six dollars. That's because we're we're also, um, again, thanks to Carol, I'm going to be getting a cash um, contribution from Atlantic Furniture of forty-five hundred dollars. And then there are in-kind contributions coming from uh, various sources that would help offset the, the match. So it's a relatively modest overall match, um, certainly compared to some of the previous uh, MVP projects that, that we did. Um, so tonight, um, I'm hoping to ask you to uh, sign off on submitting the grant, submitting a formal letter of support 
for the grant and then approving um, there's a, a statement of match that hopefully was in your package that um, contains all of the numbers that I just made reference to. So I will stop there and see if you have questions. Carolyn, do you have anything you want to add? Um, yes. Whoops. Um, I just want to mention that um, we, we had such good momentum last year um, in February 29th. Um, our leap year um, forum 2020 was very successful. People were really excited and then the pandemic hit. So what we're trying to do is um, recapture that momentum. We're trying to include, um, you know, kids uh, from the schools to be involved in this because, you know, that's the next generation of stewardship and um, involvement in climate change and, and it, they will be affected. Um, we're hoping that um, because we're willing to work as a healthy soils demonstration project that um, some of the understanding of what healthy soils is um, and the impact that Deerfield has um, on climate change in the sense that we have, you know, carbon uh, sequestration happening in Deerfield. Um, it's um, really important, I think, that there is be some explanation and we're gonna calculate what is happening in Deerfield. And I think that's pretty excited and exciting. And, and it's wonderful that we have um, some farmers in town that are willing to work with our kids and, um, you know, re the regenerative ink to, to, you know, make this happen. So it's very exciting. Trevor, you have anything? Well, um, I just, I'm trying to understand what the, what the outlay of cash is for us, what, what our exposure is for this uh, grant. Again, it was, um, Total project cost of 66,000. The grant amount was for 42,102. Our total project match was 24,572. Um, but I, I, I just wanted to understand the true, the true, you know, the, just the true cost. Does this cover, like I added up all the, co the consultant fees and that was 26,432, um, but that's more than our total match. So uh, is there other expenses here involved with this that I'm not catching? I'm sorry, Trevor, you, the last part you said was you added up the total of, of what? The total for the MVP uh, consultant costs uh, for the project and they came up to 26,432 but uh, so I'm trying to understand is the 66,000 everything or is there also additional money that we're spending over and above the grant stuff now the 66,773 is the total project cost including the grant amount and the, and the match and the in kind match Yep. So, so the, you know, the consultant costs are not going to be as much as that because there is uh, $10,000, $10,626 in in-kind match that, that makes up a part of that total project cost. Um, and that in-kind match is the time from town officials, um, from town boards, from uh, the teachers at Frontier High School and, um, contributions for our climate forum for food and things like that. Right. And, and then I just, well, I was just kind of looking at the, for MVP consultants, was that, um, I was just trying to understand. So that was like, I was just trying to go through these 10,000, 5,000. What 000. document are, are you looking at? Oh, I was that. looking at, I guess at the, I think it was the thing that you put together for the for the meeting that just listed out, it was a detailed scope of work. Uh, oh, Deerfield okay. MVP F, FY22 application. So it's going through each task and just looking at the cost of each item and you know w where the money was being spent. Um, I, I, I believe in it. I think it's a good, I mean, especially this this time because it engages our, our, our children and 
the schools. Um, I just wanted to make sure I just really understand where where the cast is being outlaid and um, you know what, Chris, I think um, I think just to explain to everybody, why don't we go over each task so you know where the um, um, contribution is and that will explain it. And then Trevor, what you can do is you can add what the cash outlay is for each of the tasks, okay? Okay. And that will give you an idea of where it's coming from as well as a total. So Chris, do you mind just going over, um, let's go over task one. We could start with the grant amount uh, yeah. request. Yeah, well, Before we start, what, I would... what I'm trying, what I think Trevor is trying to get is the consultant fees on top of the 66.7, or is that included in that? That, that include that includes the, the consultant fees. It does. Okay. Yes. That's part of the grant. Okay. Yeah. What I would refer you to, uh, I'm not sure if you had it, have it in your packet, but there was a Excel spreadsheet that had a more detailed budget. Yeah, I saw that one. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, do you have a copy of the Excel spreadsheet in front of you? If you it's look at, in their at that, packet, there's three different pages, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, the Excel spreadsheet should be a, a single standalone page. There were two different tabs there. I gave them both tabs. Let me just, it's oh, the scope oh, okay. of work, right? Yeah, it's the, it's it's the, the scope, scope of work. So budget. it's the, yep. Hold on, let me find it. So it says the okay. town of Deerfield FY 2020, FY 22 MVP action grant scope and budget. Mm -hmm. Right. And so in order to print it, it took me three pages to print it because they can't see it on a screen the same, the same way you and I do, Chris, because they want paper. Oh, okay. I, I so, think okay. what, I, I think page, if you page look 17, at. Page 17, page yeah, 17 in your yeah. packet. Yeah, yep. if you if you go to attachment G, it has the totals of what um, is actually cash and what is in kind. Trevor? Yes. No, I agree. I just I know that you know our consulting fee isn't in kind, right? I mean that's it's the fees to do all this work. So when I added that total up, it was like twenty eight thousand dollars. And that's part of the grant. That that's what we're requesting. I see. So, I see what you're saying. So, Trevor, the, if if we're looking at the at the Excel spreadsheet, yep. the total grant amount plus the um, cash match are really what what's going to be expended. So that total is um, roughly fifty six thousand dollars and change, um, and some of that is for materials, but most of that is for um, consultant fees. Um, so that includes, for example, the regenerative design, um, company is going to be doing the healthy soils demonstration project. Um, and then, um, there's some costs in there for, you know, running the climate forum and so forth. But th those are the accurate numbers in, in the Excel spreadsheet. Those are the accurate numbers that are also reflected in the statement of match, which you need to um, endorse and, and vote to submit um, as part of tonight's meeting. I just want to add sense? that regenerative, um, the regenerative company is the same consulting company that has the state contract for the Healthy, Healthy Soils Initiative. So um, we're using um, the same contractor or same consultant that the state had to um, produce their healthy soils initiative that was um, just voted on and passed at the state level. I believe there's $160 million to start uh, the healthy soils initiative in Massachusetts in this current budget year. And uh, so the idea is to be a demonstration project and hopefully this will leverage us into um, further opportunities. Uh, 
in your presentation, Chris, you got uh, 9546 cash coming from the town of Deerfield uh, from available funds. What funds are these? Well, um, that's what we had in the grant the last time around. Um, and I, um, I guess I would defer to Casey about um, whether or not that's still accurate. So initially when we asked for money from for capital, um, it the grant application looked much different. So we, I think it was 384, but we had the parking lot in there. And so after some consideration and discussion, that was reduced down to take the parking lot out and, and the park, that's the parking lot for the Leary lot um, and reevaluate what we were submitting. So the cash match is the match that we need to allocate now that we've made a, a change in capital. This doesn't fit within a capital um, by law definition. So this cash match, we need to settle a, a place in our budget to put this. That come out of contract. But we wouldn't service. be asking for a huge amount from capital. CIPC, sorry. Okay. This but we do, um, in, in the application, we do need to identify the source of the funds, um, Casey. So that, you know, that has to go into this cash match form. Past we've used um, contracted services um, line item because that's uh, that's how we've paid Chris in the past. So, and we do have we do have money in that line item. Okay. That's fiscal. I'd have to go back and check the total, but we do have money in that line item. That we would have fiscal twenty one or twenty two. Twenty two. And it Both, would be actually. It'd be twenty four thousand five. 72 is what we would have in that contracted services no that's the total project match the cash match match is 9546 right chris uh, i see Just correct right. that's okay. correct right because 45 was a donation i got you correct okay yeah and the rest of the um match 10626 is um in kind hours from ourselves volunteering to go to committee meetings. Um, Casey and Jen's time. Um, and also um, we have Eagle Brook and Deerfield Academy um, donating um, food for our climate forum. And then we have Frontier High School, um, you know, teachers hours that will count, you know, for uh, the, like the, um, a virathon team and you know um going out and doing soil sampling and stuff like that no well, sounds good um obviously this next coming year is going to be physically challenging for all of us with the when it comes to the fiscal part of our budgets, but um, I think this is small money for a very good project, uh, especially now that we're getting the involvement of the, the high school and stuff with it. Um, I've been involved with the, as um, I'm president, current president of the Massachusetts Association of Conservation Districts and the Massachusetts Association of Conservation Districts and, uh, supports the Massachusetts Envirothon teams uh, that compete nationally. And so I've been involved in that about 15 years. And I, the Envirothon is so exciting and um, it's just a wonderful thing every year for the high school kids. It's extracurricular um, and it gives them um, something to put on their, um, you know, when they apply to colleges and stuff, but it also just is so exciting to the kids. It really encourages them to be aware and um, be involved. So we're, we, you know, sponsoring the team at Frontier, I think is, is really important. Um, I, I, can't, I can't say enough good things about it.
Um, the kids, all the kids that I'm aware of have all gone on to do wonderful things um, in college and, and were really positively impacted, you know, all the teams that I was involved with. So I certainly would like to see one at Frontier. Uh, Casey, what votes do we need on this? Sorry. Chris, we need a vote to... Um, need a vote to a submit vote on the statement the... Of match and a vote on the MVP grant application itself. I would, and and uh, a, a vote to submit a letter of support. So I guess there's oh, three that's parts. Right. I would make a motion to move the application forward. I'll second that. Uh, further discussion? Now. Uh, those in favor? Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Dave Wolfman. Uh, I, Trevor McDaniel. Okay. Um, I would make a motion to um, support the um, contribution. Do, Chris, do we do we need to say what the contribution is? Is cash? Or do we just say that the contribution? Casey? Um, vote to approve attachment B, G, the statement of match. Okay. Um, I make a motion to attach, uh, to support the attachment G, the statement of match. Dave Wolfman, second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Trevor. Hi, Wolfman. And and then what, Chris? What did you need us to do next? Uh, to um, oh, a letter uh, of support. To, I'm to sorry. Pro provide a letter of support. Yes. Um, I make a motion that we provide a letter of support. Dave to... Wolfman, second it. Uh, any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? I, Carolyn Ness. I, Dave Wolfman. I, Trevor McDaniel. Okay. Motion carried, three zero zero. Trevor, did you have any other questions? I, it seems like you're a little concerned. I, I am hesitant. I just, I'm very I'm concerned about our budgets. Um, um, I just feel like for, for me, I did not have enough time to review this. I, this is the first time I've seen it in this format. Um, okay. You know, I know we've talked about it here and there, but it, you know, it was brought up for a vote today in this format. And I just, you know, I'm you know sorry. Me, I'm, I'm always concerned about unintended consequences and we always um, not That's having enough time to think about it. So. Right. That's why actually we scaled down this um, application. No, I, I know you did. I can tell that. Thank you. This is a very small application, but yeah. I, I, I think it's important only because um, it is hoping to recapture the momentum we had from last year. And um, we need to get the kids back involved again. So, yeah. um, and, it, and it's a great way to get the kids involved with hopefully our farmers and landowners, you know, the carbon sequestration, I can hardly say that word, um, is um, just being start, started to be understood as, as having huge impact on, um, you know, climate change. And so how people manage, and I think in Massachusetts, how people manage their lawns, how farmers manage their fields, this is gonna have a huge impact in the next 15 or 20 years. And so this is part of our Deerfield 2030. We really, you know, have to get moving on this. I, I know, you know, we really truly lost a year. We, we started out, like I said, February 29th, 2020. We had 10 years to do something. And I, I apologize to Chris myself just, just today 
how, you know, we had lost focus because there just wasn't literally no time. And uh, everybody was involved with, you know, the pandemic and, and the budget issues and all the consequences of extra work. So we're, we're, this, this small grant is really going to um, make every effort to start, start up again and try to recapture our, you know, Deerfield 2030. I uh, appreciate Trevor's concern. Um, as far as I'm concerned, I know any further projects with this type of grant, I'm going to try to insist that the town of Deerfield has its own clerk of works overseeing things. Uh, we can't rely on engineering firms and stuff uh, because it bit us in the last couple of projects. So uh, any construction projects, uh, we're going to have to look at a lot closer than we have in the past. You know, Mill Village worked out fairly well, but you know, tree boxes and Kelleher have not. I know. Well, that <sighs> can't say anything. And I know we can't say publicly, but yeah. it has been disappointing. Kelleher Drive has been disappointing. Yeah. I I can say that legitimately. Like I said, if we have our own clerk of works that's just responsible for the town of Deerfield on these projects, I think that we could uh, govern them a little bit better. So, yep. That's for, for us. So. Okay. So is that everything you need, Chris? It is. Thank you very much. Appreciate your support. Thank you, Chris. Chris. Uh, the next hearing is scheduled at seven o'clock. So uh, let's move on to uh, selectman reports and announcements. Do you have anything? Um, let's see. Well, I, you know, just <laughs> the perennial update on the sewer. Uh, we're very close um, to getting a notice to, uh, to proceed on phase one uh, of the project. Uh, so that, that's pretty exciting to finally get that, that going. Um, I think that'll happen this week. Um, um, I think if everything goes, goes well, that'll happen this week. So um, I've been a, a little bit out of commission for a couple of weeks, so I don't have a lot, uh, a lot to talk about, but, uh, but very excited that we're, we're moving forward with the, um, with the sewer work for sure. And, and then we're still waiting, um, the DPC got, their new camera um, item to do the large. Um, so we have a, a variety of different, you know, diameters of pipe that carry sewage in town. And um, there's one, the, the, the interchange and the big pipe that leads from, you know, kind of near the old Shelly Deli or, you know, that area um, down to the plant is a, is a much larger pipe. And so the camera um, kind of vehicle that that we that they've had to do all the other pipes is much smaller when it gets into a big pipe like this it kind of goes underneath the water so they needed a different camera truck kind of to to do that camera work of that so we they have that they got it this week so that in the next week or two at the latest we should have all the data back for south deerfield pipe infrastructure um and you know we're going to get moving uh get moving on you know figuring out what we need to do and how we need to lay out that kind of work to start re replacing and relining the pipes that are in, you know, in better shape than the ones that we have to dig up. So once we get all that together, I will get it back to you. Okay. Very good. Yep. Did Carolyn, you, do you have anything? Um, I just, I guess I just want to mention that uh, we've had quite a lot of damage in the last couple of storms. I mean, I see Kevin on. Yeah. Uh, so I, my only suggestion would be um, we need to analyze what we have as a total town wide and then try to figure out if, if it would fit under the natural resource and conservation service program. I'm, go I'm going to do some outreach tomorrow and try to see if we can, sh you know, show some of that as from, you know, the current events, if it would qualify. I'm, I really don't know what has been um, 
I do not believe any money was funded in the last, in the previous, not the last fiscal year, but the previous one before that. So I have to see, and usually it's catch up between that program and the FEMA program. So um, I have to go back and see if there's any availability of funding. So I'll reach out to McGovern's office and um, see what they can do for us coming up. If, if Kevin's on, I was wondering if I could ask, I don't know if he's had an update at all of what River Road looks like. I know that McClellan Farm has got an issue uh, and he closed down that road, you know, I think further on past the asphalt, but. Well, McClellan you know, Farm Road was an actual collapse. Yes. Uh, so. Yeah. I, I wondered how River Road was working with, you know, River. that issue that we know is troubled. So, so the river road section, not the, not the short section that um, has already been repaired at one point right. in time, a few years right. ago, not that section, but the one that's further up by the 500 block. Yes. Um, that is, that is an issue. It's still an issue. Yeah. Um, we reached out to uh, Western, or no, um, Pine Bond, and I'm requesting a, a, uh, a cost for engineering and some boring that way I can try and utilize some chapter 90 money to get that ready. Mm -hmm. So that way we have a, a shovel ready project. So if some money comes up, we can, we can put our hand right up and say, here we are, we're ready to go. Um, yeah. I, I'm not going to lie to you. And I don't want to pretty paint a pretty picture. It, it's, it's getting pretty ugly up there. It um, is ugly. And, and there could be a point in time, you know, and again, I'm not, not trying to put up a black flag, but there could be a point in time that we may end up having to shut down river road. Right. I know it's a dangerous spot. There is no, you know, on that right side, on the river side, it just drops off and, and that whole embankment slides. And I just want to make dropped about 20 feet. Is it now? Yeah. Because yeah, we, we used to be able to drive on top of that in, in mow yep. with an over the guardrail mower. So you're talking the width of a tractor plus another 15, 18 feet of reach. Yeah. And now you're talking less than four feet and then it, it drops right off. Um, yeah. You know, I, I do know that, you know, we, we are in the process. We're going to be putting a little bit of drainage in across um, the, the west side, west side of the street. Yeah. Um, but I'll be honest with you, you know, it, as much as it rains, it doesn't move. The river yeah. comes up, the river goes down, the embankment disappears. It rains, yeah. the embankment doesn't move. The river comes up, the river goes down, and then it moves. I believe, I don't have an engineering degree. But yeah. from what I've observed, every time the river comes up and goes down is when we're having the issue. More of a hydraulic sucking it down. That would be my opinion. You know, we could have still some issues of, of, of slating coming across, um, you know, because we have so many different types of, of soils there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it, it's, it's not very pretty right there. It's, it's going to yeah. be an issue here pretty soon. I, yeah. That's why I was going to see what NRCS has available as help for us because yeah. unfortunately their match, you know, we're going to have to have like a 25% match, but 25% of, a, you know, the one or ticket. $2 million is better than yeah. hundred percent of a million or $2 million. So I, I, unfortunately these projects are getting, are quite big. So, yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm just eyeballing it. It's about $500,000 for a thousand feet. So, I mean, we, we're we really very close to a couple million, I think. I know. Because as soon as you go a little bit further north, so you, you, you basically got two problems there. You, you've got the one problem with the embankment sliding down, which would be on the east side of the road, right next yeah. to that residence. Then you move up the road another 400, 500 feet. Now you've got that, that steel culvert that's collapsing underneath the road that you've got two eight by eights Hold um, it up. in the middle of it, um, trying to keep the pipe from becoming oblong. You know, and so we're talking two completely different, you know, I don't think it's gonna be quite so much of an issue, you know, it, it, because you don't have any wildlife going back and forth, but because it is all dumping into the river, which is a navigational run, uh, mm -hmm. waterway, now you're talking Army Corps of Engineers, uh, it, it's, it's- And there's just, there's no, there's no embankment on either side of the road. It just drops right off to that culvert. It's it just, could turn into a small bridge. Yes. But it doesn't fall underneath the small bridge program because it's too big. Yeah. I know that whole stretch is really 
really a tough part of the road. I got I got about a thousand feet right there, and and you know I really can't. I, I have to be cautious. I really can't put any more weight on the embankment by putting material there, because that's just helping push it off. Is yeah. what the engineers are telling me. Um, but you know, once again, when we were speaking, you know, I says, you know, I, I got to do something because I, I just can't have this whole thing drop right off. So if I have right. to keep dumping material in there then I will do what I need to do to keep the road open. But, you know, at some point in time, I'm not going to win anymore. I know. I know. You know Mother Nature is going to take over and she's yep. going to beat me. Yep. <sighs> um, and, and just real quickly, as far as McCullough Farm Road is concerned, it's, yeah. it, is, it is south of where the farmers, um, uh, where, they, where they utilize those fields yep. by very fortunate, by probably about maybe 100 feet. Um, but that section of road is completely closed. Literally, I drop trees across the road to keep people from driving around because if I put up barricades, they just drive around them. Yeah. And if they did, somebody would find themselves in the bottom of a 60 foot ditch. Yeah. Um, it's a big drop off. It's a big drop off. Uh, okay. Everybody's already been notified. All the farmers have been notified. PD, FD, uh, EMS, um, everybody that I could possibly already get in touch with has already been notified. And the farmers can still get to it from the north end of the road? That is correct. Okay, good. Okay. Very good. Uh, thank you for your due diligence on all that, Kevin. Uh, yeah. So, a little challenging for us sometimes, especially when uh, people come out and make adjustments to their property and affects our roads. It does. As you described to me earlier. Uh, what I'd, uh, I would like to thank uh, Barbara and her crew for uh, the excellent job they did with the town elections. The way yes. the town yeah. was handled. Yeah. Um, it was very smooth, uh, new electronic system. Everything seemed to work quite well. Um, and so uh, kudos to her and that crew. The, it was uh, well, extremely well done. Yeah. I agree with you, Dave. Yeah. Um, um, and hopefully, as we move forward, we we only had a little over 500 voters, but um, still, it's that unusual for this uh, town elections. Um, we do have some new people on the boards in town. I'd like to congratulate them. Congratulate Carolyn on her re-election. Yes. Thank you. Uh, so um, I'm going to be uh, working with uh, Casey and Jen and maybe coming up with some suggestions on uh, what we do that, uh, current blueprints for, the, uh, for that addition of the building. So uh, we may be looking at reformulating some things there with, uh, with the board's approval. Okay. Uh, anything on the Board of Health side? Yes, I, I just want to mention that the, our numbers look actually fairly good this week, um, but there is a persistent low level virus spread. So we just encourage people still to pay attention, wear masks in public, you know, that kind of thing. Um, we are having um, a last one last um, clinic, May 16th. It's a Sunday. There's going to be 10 to 3 um, at the Treehouse Clinic. Um, treehouse location and we're hoping to get johnson and johnson i i will not know until next week but um we're hopefully getting 700 to 900 doses so everybody um will have a link um that we'll put on the web our the town web page and that we'll send out to everybody that anybody that's interested and i just encourage everybody to get a vaccine if you you know if you're over 18 um, this is hugely important to us to get the last 15 or 20 percent in the town vaccinated uh, it, it, it will have huge impact we have variants when the virus is low level it it keeps mutating and it will continue to mutate and so um, it's really important that everybody get vaccinated as much as possible so we can get herd immunity and we can get our lives back to normal. So um, again, that's May 16th, 10 a.m. and it's a Sunday. So hopefully it'll be convenient for people that are working and they can just pull up 
and um, get your shot. Okay, thank you. Um, is Mary on? Is she? Sorry, no, she's not. I keep forgetting okay. I muted myself. Okay. Um, I'll wave my hand when she pops on. Okay. Okay. Uh, there's no minutes in the packet, right? No. So um, we'll move on to the discussion items. Uh, Voltrex uh, EV charger contract for approval and authorization. This is the agreement for the charger apparatus. And the I've been asked to get this contract in place prior to the infrastructure installation so that Eversource and Voltrex can coordinate it. And this was the suggested vendor from um, Energy Resources. And this is for the Leary lot? Yes. Yep. OK. And part of that's being subsidized by Bank of Savings? They are subsidizing part of it. And actually the Voltrex contract, they've given us a bit of a percentage reduction in that first annual charge um, as part of uh, basically their state contract. It's a little bit more than the state contract percentage pricing or percentage discount. Mm -hmm. um, and so Greenfield Savings Bank will be donating a certain amount on an annual basis. And this, this is part of the installation. This is part of the cost to do the installation that we requested in our grant request. So um, just for an update, maybe just an update or clarification. So we have a, a cost to put, um, you know, a charger in and then, yes. you know, uh, to, to buy a charger and then to install it. And that's like the 8310. And then, um, and then we'll get some help from generously from from Greenfield Savings. Greenfield very, Savings Bank has been very generous. Very generous. Yep. Very very helpful. Um, and then we have these um, multi uh, network multi year pricings, and then a a short terms. So are they looking at two different items here? Correct. Uh, I'm, I was looking at their warranty thing. I was trying to understand it. I don't know if anyone from the. Well, try, no, I can, if you're not comfortable with it, I can call Steve Giordano tomorrow, but um, yeah. this is their general contract. And I was just trying to understand what the, what the costs are and what we're buying and how many years we're buying and that kind of thing. So it's a five-year program. Mm -hmm. And this is actually the the um, the word is escaping me. I want to say platform, but that's not the right word. Yeah. Um, hold on. Let me pull it up so I can look at it. Kevin's probably, oh no, Kevin isn't looking at it. I don't think. Maybe he is. Keeps throwing in this look on page this. <laughs> <laughs> Which is helpful, except for some reason I don't have this in front of me. So... Now, wasn't part of this covered by an energy grant as well? Yes, yes. So we have a green communities grant that covers part of it. And so this is the network and warranty terms for this, this apparatus. Um, and you'll, you'll see there's the $1,000 discount on there. And it's a dual port charging station. So the station itself is 7210. $7,210. Yeah. And then you've got the one year prepaid, prepaid plan. Um, the activation and configuration is a small charge, but really that prepaid plan is the, is one of the things that I think if I remember correctly and Kevin can tell me if I'm wrong, but I think that's one of the things that Greenfield Savings Bank would be assisting us with. So the network terms. So we have a multi-year network pricing and the network terms start at a certain amount in the first year and then they progress over a period of time upward. I, 
I wish Lori was here so I could ask yeah. her. I can't remember what the five year, what that five year grant was for from Greenfield Savings Bank. I forget what the commitment was. Yeah, but they were going to pay a part of that. And I think that's right. where energy resources was interested in seeing that donation from them go toward the, the cloud plan itself. So, and then they have this assured point, the uh, charge point assure program, which is a whole warranty item, yes. in the, in which we are probably not purchasing. The assure program. So we need to talk to them about that because yeah. you have to have a site validation on it. Right. And that would happen after we install it. Um, so that's what I'm looking for. Mm. Okay. Oh, look, there's a wanna, fifth date on it. I just want to understand what the total cost is so. year over year and like how do we get it paid for? That's all. Uh, if I could? Sure. Um, okay, so my general understanding is this Greenfield Savings was, I believe, was going to be giving $5,000, which basically worked out to $1,000 a year. I that's could be wrong on the numbers, but I believe that's no, what that's what um, which which would help us through those. Uh, the I'm sorry, because I'm, I'm kind of going through this at the same. Sort of like administrative uh, costs. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Correct. In network terms, um, but we need to make sure that we, as a town, you know, this this is not going to be hey, come on up and plug in and hit free, um, yeah. because it's. It is costly, you know, and, and we ran some numbers and I have to apologize because I didn't have the numbers in front of me, but it was about double what we had originally anticipated. Um, so we need to make sure that there's going to be a way of, of charging for the charging system. Right. Um, you know, and, and, right. And, the, and the real big part is, is, is because I know that, you know, at one point someone said, well, yeah, sure, you know, we'll go ahead and we'll utilize it as long as it's not costing us any money. Well, obviously, yeah, that'd be nice. And I, I'd like a I'd really mm -hmm. like sure. 5,000 gallons of gasoline a year too. Um, but you know, that's not going to happen. So, you know, wh where I'm coming from is, is, is if we do something like this, we need to make sure that there's some type of a limit onto it, you know, because if somebody is trying to go ahead and utilize this, I hate to see somebody come in and go, Oh, you know what? I'm going to come in. I'm going to plug in. I'm a, I'm a two hour charge and I'm done. And then six hours later, they're still there. Mm -hmm. Um, and one of the, when I was speaking with one of the people from the, um, um, Energy the charging resources, place. and and they they basically said that no, it wasn't them. It was it was the actual charging people where you could you could put it into your cloud where you can start charging back charging them more money. So in other words, I arbitrarily you know you you paid ten dollars for two hours worth of charging, and then you got a half hour to get off, and if not, then it's going to start costing you five bucks a minute. Right. You know, and then that we way talked about that at the last not, meeting. We're not taking it. away the ability of other people to utilize what, what should be. Um, right. It's not which, free which parking. It's not, in other words, it's not free parking. Because I right. think that's exactly. what was brought up last. Someone had that question. How do you force people to move on so that they're Keep not charging them money? Yet. They'll go yeah. away yeah. fast. Yeah. And so if nothing else, be, we'll, we'll, it'll, it'll help our kitty. Yeah. So it can be set up like that. Isn't yes, that correct? Okay. Yes. So it must have like a credit card machine on it, right? Correct. Yeah. And, and that's how you pay for your original charge. Yeah. And obviously it, it captures your, your card at that point in time. And if you're not off in a timely fashion, you know, you, you can set your times of what you want. You know, you can say, you know, sure. you've, you've got five minutes or you've got two hours to get off. But after right. that, then you can start back charging that same credit card. Um, and like I said, you, you start hitting somebody's wallet and they're going to start paying attention and, and not be right. rude to other people. Yeah. Hey, uh, Trevor, do you uh, want to hold off on this until we can get more? Uh, no, I, I mean, it's up to you. If, if, if we need to do it now, we can move forward, but um, it would be nice to have someone just explain. I mean, that was, that was very helpful, Kevin. So I, I, I mean, I, it looks like we're just, we're doing a one year initial thing and we can reevaluate after that. But it's, it's you know, because there's two, two terminals, you're paying, you know, 658 bucks, but then there is a thousand dollar credit. So, I mean, it sounds like it's a good deal for the first year until we kind of figure out what we're doing. Exactly. Why don't I have Lori come talk to you about it? 
that'd okay. be good because yeah, Lori, Lori's be definitely signed. got a better handle on yeah, on yeah Lori's thing. definitely the one that's been speaking to yep. Voltrex about this I've had one conversation with Steve right Toronto. no I've, I there's so much going on so yeah I mean if it doesn't need to be tonight we'll just do it next meeting I just want to make sure we're doing got everything right do we have any objections to that Okay, we'll I'll send Mary, I'll send uh, Lori an email and Mary Icardi just hopped on. So, okay. Um, do you have a quorum yet, John? No. Okay. So it's just going to be a presentation uh, for information. Uh, the uh, personnel board is on. Uh, we'd like to welcome Mary to the meeting. And I'll give her the floor now. Great. How y'all doing? Just good. Fine. Welcome. Good. Good. So, Casey, what order am I doing what in tonight? I'm happy to be here. I want to go through a, a presentation, but really, I want to just be able to answer some questions. So, what makes the most sense in terms of order of what you want me to cover? Why don't you explain the draft results for the class comp that we discussed at the personnel board meeting last week? So that was the initial report. All and right. then so we could go to the police, police elements. Police and, and then, then the memo. All right, memo. great. All right, great. Uh, now, um, did people receive the draft class and comp report? It's in their packet. It's in their packet. Okay. So I'll just walk you through that and um, really answer, answer your questions. And then we'll hop into police. And we will go from there. So let me see. All right, so we, we've been really lucky to work with the town. Um, very happy to be with you all. So what we did is fortunately, you know, you had aggressive uh, town administration and you got a grant to do this project, which is always great, the community compact grants. And what we wanted to do is do a classification and compensation study, a really comprehensive one. The town has done it piecemeal in the past. Actually, the Collins Center has done some work with the town in the past, but never with the charge to look at the whole thing. And I know a few years ago, we did a salary survey and then it was, um, a bit interpreted and implemented in, um, you know, not a comprehensive way looking at the, the actual job duties of the job description. So our primary goal in doing a classification and compensation system is really focusing on the job descriptions. Because if you don't have accurate job descriptions, there's no way that you can have an accurate classification structure. Everybody has their perceived ideas of whose job is worth what or what grade people should be until you do the work and really find out um, what's going on in a job, the level of responsibility and things like that, you don't really know. So what we do to uh, come up with it, the job descriptions is we have a, a tried and true process. We give a comprehensive questionnaire to employees. We ask them to fill them out. We did an orientation and then we do individual interviews with people to learn about the job. Everybody doesn't write in the same way. So a written questionnaire can be helpful, but it's really chatting with the employee of each position to find out what their job is really like. And so that we can understand the context of all of the positions. So we do the questionnaire, we do an interview, we do a draft job description, we distribute those for comments, and then we finalize the job descriptions. So we call it having a number of bites at the apple so that we get that job description accurately. One of the things that we do, and this is really helpful in these times with the Massachusetts pay equity uh, law, when what we do after we finalize the, um, we evaluate the position descriptions, we rate them and put them into grades. The good thing about Deerfield is that your classification structure, the groupings of your positions are really in decent shape. We have tweaked, and you'll see when we you know, go through it, we have tweaked some of the grades and we're actually recommending that you add one grade. 
but your groupings by grades is, is fairly consistent with what we found. So that's, that's the good news. Um, the things that we evaluate when we look at a position are factors such as, uh, are you a supervisor? How closely are you supervised? Do you work for an independent board? Um, how complex is your job? What is the nature and purpose of your personal context? Meaning I could be a receptionist and meet a thousand people a day, but if I'm just telling them, you know, where to go to an office, that's very different than being an administrative assistant to a zoning board that might have to describe zoning rules to people. So it's about the nature and the purpose of the job. Obviously we uh, evaluate what education and years of experience is required. And we also evaluate the work environment and the conditions. This comes into play when you deal with public works positions. They may not have the um, independent nature of their job that somebody might in an office, but they're out in the elements and working all different hours. So we evaluate all of that to come up with the recommended classification structure. And the good thing about doing a, a classification structure all at once is that you're able to evaluate the positions, not the people who hold the jobs. Oftentimes, um, organizations pay for the, the person who holds the job. And certainly with the, the mass pay equity law, which says you have to have comparable worth, doing a job description review and, and rating it based on the factors of the job put you in much better stead. So after we did the classification review, we, we came up with seven different grades. And when you look at the table and we can share a document later when we do the other one um, of the different grades. Right now you have grades one through six. We're actually recommending that you eventually get to having seven grades. Some of your management positions are really cabinet level and then you have your department head positions. So your, your cabinet level are more like your public works, your building commissioner, your town accountant, and your town clerk treasurer collector. Those are really your uh, cabinet level positions. And then you go into your um, individual department heads or um, library director, health agent, um, sewer, those sorts of things. So we come up with a grade structure. Then what we do is we do the market survey. And it's important to realize that when you do a survey, that you're, you're evaluating the labor market. You're not evaluating towns that have the exact same population, have the exact, exact same budgets, have the exact same number of titles. Uh, those are few and far between. And you could find the perfect match down on Cape Cod. You know, that's not your labor market. Your labor market is who's going to, where do people live and will they drive to your town to go to work? So we really look at it regionally. And we tend to certainly with um, technology and so many, you know, when I started this work, you know, <clears throat> almost 30 years ago, everybody was filling out printed forms and we were doing data entry. Now all done on Excel and we can really survey more municipalities than we used to be able to. Uh, and that has helped get great data. The towns that responded um, and again, we ask many towns, but the towns that responded were Ashfield, Conway, Gill, Greenfield, Hadley, Leverett, Montague, Hampton, Northfield, Shelburne, Sunderland, Waitley, and Williamsburg. So that's who we surveyed. Um, and we got really good data. Um, and what we came up with is we analyzed the hourly rate. You live in an area with uh, divergent number of hours. Some positions are part-time, some are full-time. That doesn't mean that the duties are different. I'll use a, a clear example. A town clerk is a town clerk no matter what town you're in and how many hours they work. So you want to um, equalize that so that you're looking at the, the hourly rate. So that's what we do with our surveys and we look at average and we look at median. We did find that even though Northampton is in your labor market, 
a lot of the data was not accurate. You know, it, it's it's large. Where in your town you have people who wear work many wear many hats. In Northampton, they have a position for each one of those hats. So it's it's a little tricky. So we coalesce all of that data. We get the say the the uh, salary survey data, and we then come up with what we think the range of uh, salary should be. What we found out right away in Deerfield is that you have a very expansive range. You have 10 steps and you have an average of almost 5% between the steps. That's a very large range to have a 50% pay range. The standard is 25 to 30%. Additionally, your starting pay ranges, the bottom of your range, were well below the market. So, which is evidence that you can't hire people at the beginning of your pay ranges. Um, in recent years, people have been hired at higher steps. Uh, conversely, because you have a 50% range, you're, the top of your range is either at or above the market, which is a phenomenon we don't usually see that you have such a large range and your employees are at the low end at the beginning and above uh, at or above the market at the high end. So what we're recommending is um, cropping off or you know cutting off the bottom 20% of your pay range because you're not able to hire at those rates and they're well below they're well below the market. So what we're suggesting is converting to a two and a half um, percent. Uh, step because right now they're five percent. So, and I know you all live the budget. So, when somebody gets a five percent raise, and then you're giving a cost of living or an across the board, you could be paying just almost as level service a seven percent raise per year for people. Um, that's hard to sustain, and um, that's a very generous step. We do not see that most steps are two, two and a quarter, two and a half percent sometimes three, but we don't see ranges um, with four and a half to five percent and have it be so many steps so that you have a 50 percent range. So what we're recommending is a uh, steps of two and a half percent, dropping, you know, shifting the pay range, dropping the first few steps and shifting it um, and and implementing that. Because it is a shift in um, the way that you're doing things and you have many people who are at the maximum and that can be a problem because they either get no increase because they're at maximum or if you apply a COLA because you want your people who are at maximum to get a raise, you're applying the COLA and thus you're giving people the 5% plus the COLA, which is really unsustainable. So what we're suggesting is that you um, make the step increases smaller, expand the range, and then it really equalizes um, the way that you're treating your employees so that it's not a big bonus to the newer employees who are getting the, the largest increase. Historically, it probably makes sense that you started them low and gave them larger increases, but I think over time it has skewed your, your pay scale. So that's how we come up with the recommendations. There were only a few positions that we found uh, needed adjusting in terms of that their roles maybe have expanded since the last time you had uh, a grade review done, a classification review done, but those are, those are few and, and far between. So that's our basic approach. What we'll done is, um, Casey, I think I should go into the memo though, because now I'm gonna explain what I just said. Maybe we can do police last, would that work? That's fine. Okay, so then, and everybody got the memo I sent today. Should I share the screen? Why don't you screen share it? Okay. So what we did to help you out, because it's, it can be a challenge to 
figure out, well, what does that look like? You know, you can say, oh, we're going to change something, but how does it, how do the numbers work? You know, what does that really mean for people? Uh, if somebody was going to get a 5% raise and now they're not going to, what does that look like? Um, you know, what is it going to cost us moving forward? So what we were able to do this week, because we met with the personnel board last week and they had suggested maybe, you know, take a look at some of the numbers so that we could wrap our brains around what this would look like. So what we did is we, we um, did an analysis of um, implementing this schedule. We decided, let me find my document here. Sorry. Here we go. And memo. I'm not as savvy as Casey on this technology. So are you are you seeing the memo that says May 5th? Yes. Okay, it great. <laughs> so if you had a chance to read this, if not, so what this is is a supplement to the report because this gives you a recommended scenario the board, the finance committee, the personnel committee, you're gonna to have to decide how you want to implement. But one of the things that we talked about with the personnel boards um, you know, at, at last week's meeting was to say, let's keep it simple for this July. We're already well into the budget process. So what we came up with was an interim year, an incremental switch for, uh, for FY22 and then uh, a different adjustment for FY23. So what we're trying to do here is, I, we're calling it right-sizing the classification and compensation system because it's not really the money you're spending, it's just that it's not efficient, effective, and quite frankly, fair. Um, so what we did is we're recommending that all employees receive a 3% increase on July 1. And the way that we're recommending you do that is to increase the current pay scale by 3%. We're recommending that nobody gets a step increase, but everybody gets a 3% increase. This way, your people, and you have a number of them who are at maximum, who would only get maybe a 1% or a 2% if you were giving a COLA, they'll get 3% as will the people who would have gotten a step. So there are some people who are gonna get 3% instead of four or 5%, but it is offset by those who are gonna get 3% because they're at the maximum. So what that does is it, it equalizes the increases as a whole municipality. Now, as I mentioned, there were a few positions that really were way out of whack in terms of being well under the market or somebody in that position was at the beginning step, so which was well under the market. And some positions we actually, quote, upgraded or reclassified. Those positions, we are recommended they get on the current scale as adjusted by 3%, an additional step that we're calling an equity step. It's just to get them a little bit closer to the market. So those positions are the assistant town clerk, there's an equipment operator who's way at the bottom of the scale that should be adjusted. All of your library circulation positions are woefully, woefully behind the market an outreach coordinator at the senior center, the senior center director, one of the sewer operators and the town accountant. These positions warrant in our opinion, an equity adjustment of a step on the current system. So what does that mean? What does that look like? So what we're doing is that we're, re we're right sizing and shifting your expenditures. On the first line here, if you did nothing at all and gave no COLA and you said, okay, we're doing no COLA, we're just gonna give the step increases that are warranted or as part of our current system, step increases alone would be 
dollars. Now, these might be off a dollar here or there if I had the wrong number of hours. You know, I worked with the town accountant uh, on this and I appreciate her help. Um, so $57,000 for your step increases alone. If you did a 3% increase across the board to everybody, that would be $55,000 a year. So a 3% increase for everybody is just under what your step increases are, which means that's four or 5% for a number of people. Now the cost of the equity for those few steps, the, the, the seven or so that we talked about, that is 14,000. So the total cost for um, implementing our recommendation of 3% for everybody and the equity is 69,000, almost 70,000. However, you're not gonna be spending the 57,000 for the step increases that were, were probably budgeted already. So the true cost for FY22 is $12,700. So what we've done is we've shifted the structure without with very little cost increase. So that shows you that um, those step increases are costing you an awful lot of money and, and to sustain that would be a real challenge. Um, I'll pause here. Does anybody have a question on what FY22 looks like? No, I'm good. Okay. All right. And again, obviously, this is me presenting it. You all will have to digest and, you mm -hmm. know, uh, I'm not sharing spreadsheets tonight. We'll let Casey and the accountant deal, deal with that another day. We're just trying to show you our approach. So then for next year, for 23, we're suggesting you implement the, um, the recommended plan. So what we wanted to do um, we're making those have a step increase of two and a half percent. And now when you implement a new schedule, people will fall at different places within a, a schedule. So we always say people won't get a pay cut. They'll go to the next step that causes an increase. So we approached it the same way. Again, if you did nothing and gave no colas and just gave the step increases that would be due on top of the ones you gave for FY22, that cost would be 54,000. Now it goes down a little because some of your people will reach max and will not be at eligible. They'll be at step 10, so they won't be eligible for a step increase in FY23. We approached it for next year to guarantee everybody um, a 2% increase. Now, really your FinCom, your personnel board, your budget process next year will be, uh, will have to determine what is the minimum increase you wanna guarantee for FY23. We use 2% just as a random. You could increase uh, the whole scale by 1%, which would end up being 3% for everybody or a half a percent. That's really your decisions. We used arbitrarily 2%. So then because the steps are close to 2%, the incremental cost is only about $2,000. So when you see a 2% increase and the implementation of the system totals 42,000, your cost of step, step increases is 54. You actually have a surplus of almost $12,000. We didn't want to create too many scenarios. What we would suggest is oh, there you go. money on implementing this schedule, but you do have a little bit flexibility with $12,000 that you could either build into the pay schedule or, or uh, like a half a percent for a cost of living adjustment. That's to be determined next year. And as you see up here, we say, you know, it's up to the finance committee. You're not going to decide today what you're going to implement for next July. This is just to help illustrate that how expensive your step increase program really is. Because we're even guaranteeing people, you know, 3%, 2.5%. And that is the norm. 
Now, what you could do in FY23 is guarantee 2% and then increase the scale by one or 2%. It would just cost you um, a little bit more. And if you have people who are um, newer um, and people move on in two years, it could be a little bit less money. Um, the, it's not just about the cost. So we say here, you know, when you read the memo, you know, by modifying the structure, you're treated more equitably by having it be, uh, by allowing the town to provide step increases and then across the board increases, it really does equalize the system. It's more equitable. You can have long-term employees who are at the maximum pay getting just a COLA, if that, and newer, less experienced people getting a significant increase. Yes, they make less money, but it, it's, it's too big of a swing from 5% or even six or 7% to one or 2%. And that hurts in the morale. Um, the top of your pay scale is fine within the market. So we didn't even recommend a brand new pay scale. We added one grade and then we kept most of your structure. So in one way it will um, help maintain your system. The grade structure was not the problem. It was the pay structure. So that's kind of the initial report and recommendations. And this gives you a visual of, of what it is you're dealing with. It's shifting your costs, not necessarily increasing your costs. So now I can take questions if you want on these. I can close this out. <coughs> All right. Should I jump right into the police so then I can handle questions all at once at the end? Yeah, why don't you do that, Mary? Okay, great. I'm going to stop sharing this. And then I'm going to start sharing the next one. Oh, I'm getting so good at this. Um, police. Um, all right, here we go, share. All right, so as many of you know, part of the reason we're do we did a police survey is that the initial compensation and classification uh, review didn't capture some of the nuances that happen in a, in a police contract or a police in a unionized police force. You know, there's different rates of pay, uh, there's hourly wages, there's uh, differentials. And rightly so, the chief brought up the, uh, the, uh, the fact that not many departments have full-time regular departments that they either use just reserves or they don't have a regular staff or regular shifts. So what we did, and with his help, we uh, discussed which municipalities to include. We added a few that we were we had used for the for the original study, and then we also obtained information about other um, types of pay. So what we found with um, the police survey is that we we looked at things like the base pay, um, educational pay, shift differential, uh, officer in charge pay, longevity, department staffing, health insurance contribution rates, callback provisions, holiday pay, court time compensation, vacation leave, sick leave, personal days, clothing allowance, how overtime is done, and then some other stipends. So you can see um, by only looking at base pay, we weren't really giving the town a great flavor of, of how competitive you are with the, um, with the market uh, municipalities. So we were able to obtain data from Ashfield, Irving, Gill, Granby, Greenfield, Hadley, Hamden, Montague, Northampton, Shelburne, Southampton, Sunderland, and Waitley. Again, a strong pool. 
some are smaller, some are larger. It really does give us a blended, you know, we look at the pay for average and median. So what we found is that they are, Deerfield police really are compensated well within or above the labor market. Um, you know, we, we compared, um, you know, we took into account the size of the department and we did provide the, all of the detail electronically in terms of um, if people wanna look at the actual detail. And we did use the hourly, again, the hourly average and median and, um, and we only used the municipalities with full-time officers. We collected the data on the part-time officers or the reserve officers, um, and that's included in the, in the survey data. But for our purpose of this report, and the chief was right, we should be comparing apples to apples. So we only compared the uh, full-time salaries. So the following table shows you the minimum and maximum pay of full-time patrol officers. And uh, the backup data has all of the towns listed. So Deerfield, the minimum pay is 2376. The maximum pay is, is 2949. So you can see that um, Deerfield is above, slightly, um, you know, it is above the median and the average. When you think about a um, dollar an hour, if you work 40 hours a week, that's $2,000 a year. And again, this is just your base pay. But on the face of it, you are you know, certainly well within or above the market on the base pay. Then what we did is, um, you know, and as I say here, the hourly rate is only one type of compensation for police. Um, you have a generous, educational incentive program that isn't in place for all of the survey municipalities. You all adopted the Quinn bill and have paid the full amount on that. Uh, so that needs to be factored in. So, you know, that increases the base and that goes into the overtime rate. Deerfield has a competitive shift differential. Other communities, um, had 40 cents an hour and some, some had more, some had less. Um, you have a dollar per hour for one shift, um, the evening shift, a dollar 50 for the uh, later shift and, and $4 an hour for the officer in charge. Those are at or above most of the, um, the, the comparison municipalities. I will say, when you look at the data, the town of Granby, is an outlier. Um, very generous contract provisions. We would not recommend trying that the town try to match Granby's um, compensation schedules. Um, I don't know why. They either have an aggressive union or a generous town. I, you know, don't begrudge anybody, but we don't feel, we feel that they are a, a, an outlier and we would not use that as a standard of what you should adopt. Uh, they have many percentages built in. So we call it the gift that keeps on giving that every time there's an increase, each one of those is fed and increased. So uh, we do not recommend, and, and as I said, we don't begrudge Granby anything. Um, the health insurance contribution rate was one that jumped out at us though. So when you look at this table, um, you know, the town pays 65.35, that's your split. So only Sunderland and Granby, ironic, Granby is lower, but that's why they probably make more money in other areas. You have to look at the whole picture. Uh, Waitley is a little bit higher and then Shelburne and then Montague and Northampton. That's 80, 80, 20, 75, 25. Obviously the town as a whole has to look at the health insurance and see if it's a detriment to your ability to recruit people. Um, we know that it's not an easy, easy thing to do, but if in fact you're doing, um, if you ever ended up in a, a mediation or an arbitration on police, health insurance is one of those that um, could come back to bite you. It's an affordability issue, absolutely. And we don't have an answer for that, but 
you may want to um, find things to, to keep competitive. One thing that um, one thing that the Deerfield is lower on, and when you look at the, the survey data, is um, something like clothing allowance. That's an area where you could you could adjust. So when you see the backup data, you'll be able to see the few areas that you might want to adjust. But the good news is on your on this police report shows that you're really well in, well within the market in the market. We're not overly concerned. Um, you may lose people to other departments. Uh, certainly Granby could scoop anybody up um, or somebody wants to go to another department. But even the larger municipalities of, of Northampton, your salary and some of your benefits are, are very close. Northampton has, and Montague have more stipends. They have more, they have more positions that they give differentials to. You're not quite is large though. So I think that's where it comes into to play that some of your people wear more hats and they're more generalized. You don't have a, a designate, it's my understanding, you don't have a designated um, school resource officer. So that we is- actually. We do know, actually, sorry. You do, okay. So the, I, there was one that you don't have and I don't have it on the tip of my tongue. And the way people pay detectives is different. Sometimes it's a freestanding position Sometimes it's a stipend on top of a patrol officer. So again, there's some nuances in there, but um, I'm really pleased that we were able to do that comparison for you with the police because the initial data was not um, sufficient. Most of the positions in the, the first class in comp are very straightforward. It's their pay and that's what you're comparing, you know, but. To be fair, the police have other rates. So what we were able to, to show with the data collection is that you should feel pretty good about where your police are in that um, they are well, you know, you're gonna have, there's plenty that make a lot less. There's a few that might make a little more or might have a few enhanced benefits, but number of holidays, personal time, callback hours, all of that is fairly industry standard. So uh, that's good news. All right, I was going to ask, but I'll wait. I'll wait and let other people ask questions, yeah. then I'll ask one. And you may want time to digest these reports and then loop back. You know, my role tonight was just to give you a flavor of it. And certainly as the personnel board, FinCom and board of select, the select board, um, you know, digest it a little bit. We can certainly um, do a deeper dive. Okay. I think one of the things that I was concerned about in terms of, so we now have a flavor of what compensation looks like, both from a police perspective, because it's slightly different, and from a general employee perspective. Um, there were some things that you and I had talked about that may become questions we can answer as we move through this. So your suggestion of changing Making, a trans, making this a transitional year and moving in a certain percentage for all employees across the board. And then making decisions later on to address some of the shift to a full, to a full classification change. And I'm not saying that the right way, Mary, but I'm trying to get it across. Okay, you've got your transition year, you've got your next year. Um, what were some of the other things that you thought we should think about? Well, in terms of the, the two-year transition concept. It would be, um, you know, at first we did it, we, we looked at it first saying, okay, let's implement this, this July. We'll, we'll do the new schedule. Um, quite frankly, where people fell, it would, it would cost you an awful lot more, you know, to do it this, this year. And what you wouldn't do is address the people who have been at maximum. So by in, because we're not increasing, we're slightly increasing the maximum of the range. 
So it would still hold your senior people back from any increase. So okay. this way, by doing a 3% across the board to everybody to say everybody is valued at, you know, at this same level as we're going forward. Now, to be fair, you will have people not happy. They're not getting their 5%. Well, they also, they also will, um, you know, people on the low end of the scale is different, you know, 3% from a low end of the scale to the top end of the scale is quite a bit different. And granted, people have been here longer, so there's an argument for that. But um, Right, and, and I, I hope you come work for us because that's the, the conundrum when you have a system. Because if we implemented getting people to what the market would be, those people at the beginning of the scale would get 15 to 20% increases. So by doing it, we'll give you 3%. The ones who are way out of whack will get, will get that 5% step, four or five, depending on where it is. So those seven to eight people will be getting close to you know, eight, 9% because it's so bad at the bottom of the range. So that would be even worse to somebody who's at the maximum, not getting anything. So what we've done is we've kind of given a half step on the way to equity because those people who are, who are really below will, you know, and you're not able to hire people at that starting rate. So it, it, it's a crapshoot. It, it's how you analyze it. You could do, but if you do the steps just for the people who are entitled to them, that's $57,000. And those steps and that cost is, is um, that's a lot. And maintaining 5% steps and just applying COLAs to it, which is what has happened in the past few years, I'm not sure how sustainable that is. And yes, people in lower 3%, is 3% whether you've got a high paying job or a low paying job, you know, so it's, but the thing about our recommendation is we're not moving people other than those few that deserve, deserve, uh, or are, you know, that we recommend get that extra step. It's not changing your pay range because your pay range, you know, the high end of your pay is, is at or above the market. So by not changing it by another full step, we're holding that back a little bit, but by making it be the 3% more, we're being fair to those employees who have been at max for quite some time. So there's, you can certainly, and that's why we put in the, in the report, FinCom personnel board, select board, do a few different scenarios. We did one for you for next year. You could say tonight, well, you know, we want to, um, we have more money for this year. You could, you could change that to 4% for everybody and do that math. We did one scenario to show you. You may want to say, let's do a 4% for everybody across the board because that's at least close enough to the 5%. Mm -hmm. Or you could say, uh, and again, we've seen so many different scenarios and we didn't want to get ahead of ourselves to say option A, B, C. I could yeah. see you doing something like, which in Casey's head's going to pop off if I say this, um, you could say 5% for step five and below, you know, 3% for step six and above. We tried to keep it simple in the example so that you could really wrap your, your brains around it. Then for next year, you fully implement a new schedule with two and a half percent steps, but we've shifted the pay ranges up. So there's still room for people to grow. The recommendation in the report has nobody being above or outside the market. Now, some fall on the top step because some of your positions are well above the market. Mm -hmm. And and that's great. You have good people, you should pay them well. Um, you know, so but so you'll see that we did 
initially we talked about 10 steps at two and a half for a 25% range. It's just hard to get there with some of the rates of pay that you are paying the people at maximum. So we switched it to 12 steps at two and a half for a 30% range. That's cropping off the 20% from your existing. So nobody is what we called red circled. So yeah. they get their 3%. They're going to get, and these are the people who have been at max. They're going to get their 3% under our scenario, 3% this year. They're going to get the minimum of 2% next year, and they're still on the pay scale. Now, some of them are at step 12. I think there's three positions. So mm -hmm. that's our approach. Mary, Christina has a question. I'll be quick, I promise. <laughs> Um, hi, Mary. Uh, hi. I was actually on the personnel board meeting last week. I'm the I know, senior I remember. Center. Okay. <laughs> um, so two things, and, and I know you're, you, in your recommendation that you're talking about, um, would those positions of, that you believe need in pay increases, which of course I'm one of them, which is why I'm asking this, would would that be for this year in July or would that be next year, a whole, you know, a, a whole other year? I just wasn't totally clear about that. It's yes and yes. So the, the recommendations for, and it's, I think it's every one of those circulation positions uh, is that they would be, and again, we talk positions, not people. Uh, right. Anybody in those titles would get what we're saying is that we're gonna increase the pay scale by 3% plus they would get a step this July. That's part of that implementation cost. So they are the ones, and of course it has nothing to do with you being charming with <laughs> uh, at that 8% sort of range. So okay. can you explain the July. equity piece of that again, Mary? Sure, the equity piece is that the pay is so low you can't even get them to the minimum of a recommended range. So okay. giving them, we're increasing the whole pay scale by 3%. So everybody gets that and they stay in their existing step. Okay? okay. Everybody, but these, I'm calling it eight. It might be everybody, but these eight are going to get 3%. And if I'm in a grade five, step five, I'm going to stay at grade five, step five, but it's only, it's 3% higher. If I'm in one of the library positions, or let me use the assistant town clerk so it's not about her staff, you know, <laughs> that position, and I'm in a grade three, step four, and that position has been determined to be way out of whack, or I would then go to grade three, step five. So I would get the 3% with the scale, and I'd get that equity step. So the, the titles listed there from assistant town clerk through town accountant are getting an equity step above the 3%. And so I'll ask one more question about that equity thing. The equity, what by virtue of evaluating the job descriptions and looking at the market, you've determined that those particular positions need to be placed differently because of the factors that make up their tasks and responsibilities, right? Right, so in, in, in those instances there, we have found, we have to go back to the evaluation of the grades, which is the classification mm -hmm. structure. So there's two okay. in those. It's the grade and it's the market survey. Most okay. of those are because you are paying people as, at the library, you're paying them as entry level clerks when they really should be a higher grade. So that's okay. why all of those circulation positions warrant, they're not doing reception. You're paying them $16 an hour. Okay, that's their rate of pay, $16.02. Right. And so it, that's when you're looking at which grade are we a grade one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Those instances, your assistant town clerk has statutory authority. Correct. In that position, not just, it's not the salary survey that's driving it, it's the classification structure. So okay. that's where 
that's where that's coming from. So that's a good point. And yes, it is a recommendation and nobody has to adopt our recommendation. <laughs> right. Raloon? I just have a, a question and I'm sure you, you've said this before, but I, I missed it. The the 3% that you're recommending across the board for fiscal year 22 as sort of a transitional period, is that including the COLA or is that in addition to the COLA? That is the COLA. That is the no steps. The that COLA is the right. COLA, right? Okay. It's the only right. increase we're recommending other than those equity steps for those eight positions. Trevor, I know there's a question burning in your mind. <laughs> there's many. I was right. There are I mean, many. not the only thing that's burning in his mind. <laughs> <laughs> you um, mean his brain is fried? Oh, no. Well, I was no, just I wondering. I was just not, wondering what the person. I was just wondering what the personnel committee um, had discussed at this point. Well, we've really. I mean, so so Mary's been coming every meeting for a little while and just sort of giving us updates as this process has developed. And then there was a little there was a little bit of new information tonight, just as this as the story has gotten more and more fleshed out. Um, so to be honest, we've really been been listening and and helping, you know, kind of answering questions as the process has has gone through. Um, but we haven't gotten to the point that we've you know, made a specific recommendation in, in, except just trying to follow along the process and learn about it from Mary and, and understand so that we'll be in a be in a position to, I guess our next would our next step as a personnel board would be to make a recommendation to the select board whether to accept yes. this. What well, I'm not I, I maybe you can yeah. help explain. I was hoping that you wouldn't, uh, well, I, I was thinking we would table this until we heard your recommendation, but I wasn't really sure what your meeting timeline was. Do you know when you, when are you meeting next? Let me check my calendar. <laughs> I think it's the third, I think it's the 26th, but let me just check. If, Do you have um, that at your fingertips, Casey? It is. I think it's the 17th. Oh, don't quote me. You're right. You're right. That's I what think I have. It's the seventeenth. I must have been thinking in April. Yeah. So yeah, it looks like May seventeenth is on, on my calendar as well. Okay, which is um, a little over two weeks, and maybe gives us a little time to chew on it with finance and with the select board. Well, I was just going to say that's before our um, May nineteenth meeting, so um, that would give us a chance to meet with the uh, finance committee as well. And John, I see your hand up. I, the finance committee, I think, is going to have to go back and revote all the budget items. It, it, let me back up. If, if this suggestion is adopted, the finance committee would have to go back and revote all the oh. uh, departmental budgets that have wages in them, I believe. Right. Yep. And I, do, I don't know. Just do we have time to do that? Yeah, I don't know. And the other thing is, does it, this is a question, the wage, the compensation plan, isn't that approved by the people at the town meeting? Yes. So, so it's kind of a catch 22. We'd have to have it approved by the people at the town meeting, yet we have to have it approved for the budget. You so, do it every year. Yeah. You do it yeah, every year, John. I know, but there's an existing one in place now that was voted at the last town meeting. Right. For, for so what you do is you build in the change that you want to make and present it as your class comp. And actually, that was a conversation, if you recall, um, at the at the personnel board meeting. Initially, Mary had suggested a range. And if you recall, I said to her, one of the things that I've noticed in Deerfield is they like to see um, at specific numbers and so that's why you see a grade and step plan with specific numbers in each step item you know in each step tier and so that that is something that gets formulated but john this happens every year yes. every year that classification plan changes and both things match so the classification plan schedule that you see 
that is voted at town meeting corresponds to the numbers that are in the budgets. And actually it connects, Brenda has it connecting electronically because she's really smart. <laughs> <laughs> and so um, yes, this is, this is something that would have to be taken up and considered. And I can think of at least one member of the finance committee that isn't gonna be happy about it because it didn't happen back in December. And that was the comment that was made to me at a meeting. And so respectfully, I understand that, but this process started at the request of the personnel board and was really taken on by staff and by the select board and in, in an effort to get a good market evaluation of where the town sits, both from a task and duty perspective, internally and externally, and a market value perspective that takes into account what changes in those jobs may have evolved since the last time the positions themselves, their duties and responsibilities were evaluated, which was several years ago. Well, we hit, we, you know, we've been having a hard time in the last few years, as you know, as Mary said, just trying to hire anybody because, you know, we we're, we're the, the task was to bring them in at step one and move them up to for the next 10 years. Um, and we knew they were always low at the bottom and the steps were, were, were generous because we knew eventually we would get them to the spot at top 10, you know, at step 10, where, where we know that it's fair for the market. And so, you know, it took time because we knew they needed to grow in their job and learn um, and, and gain skill and uh, experience through those steps. And so we knew we were paying a decent amount. Uh, we knew it was low in the beginning, but the problem was is that we couldn't hire anybody in the beginning. So we were caught in a catch-22 where we needed to bring people in at step three or four and then start them up, up the ramp. But then your steps were you know, we're large, you know, your steps were large to get to get to that top spot each year. And so it kind of defeated the purpose of hiring somebody at a low spot, knowing they were getting paid a low amount at the meantime, but they knew they had growth over those 10 years to get to the top where they're completely proficient in their job. So that was kind of the hard part. So we had asked for this to be able to figure out, well, where is everybody? You know, we seem to be having to start everybody up the chain a little bit. So um, let's have this done and let's evaluate it. And, and it's obvious that we were low at the beginning. So stretching out those those steps, um, you know, and reducing them, you know, I think Bruce Hunter is probably looking down with a smile at the moment um, <laughs> on us all. Well, um, so to one to one thing that I you had mentioned to me before I left this afternoon, Trevor, is mm -hmm. um, if you have so I as Mary has said, they we went to twelve. The recommendation yep. was twelve steps, right, Mary? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. So at two and a half percent with twelve steps, that does give you some leeway in terms of cost of living adjustments, yep. and so it's leeway that that matches the general approach to cost of living in concert with steps mm -hmm. that I've seen in you know straw polls of my peers. In fact, this year, I told Mary earlier, this year, um, the straw poll amongst the, the town administrators and MMHR was what, what's your, your differentiation in terms of steps? And some towns were giving towns started out one and a half to about 3%. And in many towns, they hadn't, they had held their salaries at FY20 levels because of the pandemic and the economic mm -hmm. impacts. Yeah. So it, it was a measured response on many of the town's parts to consider how, to, how that impacted everything else. Well, in Deerfield, it was a little bit different. So this 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 recommendation of three percent across the board sort of takes into account the fact that we know we have to make some changes and now we have the data to back that up and moving forward the adjustment in the actual compensation plan isn't dramatic it there's a change there's a, a recognition of certain equity and there's a recognition of where certain positions seem to have fallen out in terms of changes in responsibility but there's also a recognition that for purposes of budgeting and planning, 
it behooves the municipal side because we aren't the same as the school. It behooves us to really recognize what the, the residents and taxpayers can bear in terms of the services. And I think Mary, you referred to that as, I could be wrong, but when we talked about it, you referred to that, okay, if you're doing level services, this is what you can expect to see. Yeah. Right, I mean, because typically, I mean, unless you're in a COVID year, which a lot of towns did this past year, they either gave no COLA or they held back steps. Now, if you have unions, that's a different conversation. Correct. But even you, even if you gave no COLA, most towns did give steps, which would be fifty-seven thousand dollars for you. You know, mm -hmm. so um, you know, so that yeah. step alone is 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 expensive. And then it gets into done a lot of work with unions, you know, and uh, and sometimes it sounds like oh, it's the lowest common denominator, but you don't require performance appraises for steps. You don't have a merit system, you know? So Correct. having the lower steps and having the ability to have a COLA and you can decide each year on that versus the, man, if we add a COLA, it's going to croak us with our pay scale, you know? So I think it's more equitable, um, you know, across the board. And it really does. Trevor's right. We dropped off that 20% in those four right. steps we can hire from, mm -hmm. you know? So it's not changing. You might have gotten one or two people at step one or two in the past few years. Not, okay. not many. That's She's right. Cost, Anecdotally, I can agree with that. Right. That's why the cost impact overall is not significant. It's a cost shift. Yeah, you're I think, shifting it. I think well, the one thing that, you know, I, I guess the, the ironic thing in a COVID year is that I know that our staff has worked twice as hard as any other year. I mean, I just know what everyone has had to go through this year um, from our accountant to, you know, just doing the elections. And um, I can't think of one position that hasn't worked incredibly hard this past year, harder than any other year that I've ever been involved with town government. And, um, it, it just, it's tough. It's really tough. It's mm -hmm. to, um, you know, it is what it is, but it is just, I, I, I'm, I'm very, uh, I want the residents to know how incredibly hard their, st their staff has worked for them this year. Uh, just unbelievably hard. You know, Trevor, you bring up an excellent point. And the reason we went with the 3% was because the top of your scale is really at or above. Right market so by yep. adding too much percentages to the base you're exacerbating that and now you should have well-paid people don't get sure yeah now i will tell you what we have seen municipalities do and I, you know this is just an example of what others have done is they've given you know one-time covid bonuses a thousand dollars five hundred dollars and yep. and I, you know People have gone above and beyond, but then the tricky part with that is the justice issues. Oh, absolutely. Correct. You work from yeah. home. How do I know you weren't? In residence laundry? elders. Correct. You know, I mean. Much harder to say a bonus. It's than, very hard. Yeah. It's right. very hard. It is, even though they have worked very hard. Absolutely. And and you know what? We've all, um, my husband's a school finance director. Oh, <laughs> Bus, the no bus more. routes, the classrooms, you know, yep. uh, um, but I'm ready to run away. I'm so sick of my family. So <laughs> <laughs> my second shot is tomorrow. I can't. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Good for you. So Casey, I think, you know, it, whether I think they need to chew on it for a few. Yeah. Minutes, a personal a while. meeting, a finance okay. committee meeting. You've got really talented people. I will get my scratch notes off of the spreadsheet so that you can share those because you've okay. got people who can look at the formulas and it's all linked and everything. You could run a different scenario. You know, okay. that's what the beauty is. We want to give you the tools to kind of uh, chew on it and, and make your decisions and you can do the math of, well, if we did this, what, you know, if then that sort of thing. So mm -hmm. I'll get that spreadsheet 
before you have those meetings. And then I think you can conceptualize it a little bit better. Okay. Yeah. Very helpful. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Mary. Oh, thank you. All right. Do you want, Casey, do you want to, do you want to vote um, to table it or do you want just consensus? I think consensus at this yeah. point, because many people. Nope, she muted herself. There you go. <laughs> You're good. I okay. think, so what I was saying was people can actually, you know, they can watch it and see what the basic identifiers of the report are. And, and there's still some things that I think Mary wants to tweak in terms of language in a couple places, but it, it does identify the outliers that were noticed in the evaluations. It shows the comparatives in terms of the police. Um, so it gives people something to chew on. I do hear what John is saying about making changes, which is one of the reasons that, and Brenda isn't here tonight. She asked me if I wanted her to come. And I said, you know, I think yes. that there's time, there's going to be a little more time to talk about it. But from her perspective, you know, for her, this could be a lift because if there is a decision from an equity perspective to, and I think this is a key piece to take a, to make a two year transition from what is current and transition to what could be and the could be actually identifies some of the changes that this compensation study has shown us. So we have to take that on somehow and it's not an easy thing, but one of the reasons I asked Mary and Brenda and I worked with her on it to give you something of a scenario is so that you had something to visualize because being able to visualize it um, will help when we try to explain that, not only to any person that walks through the door that's an employee, but to, for instance, Skipper Jeff on finance committee. You know, what, what I was trying to get to is something that you can chew on and take away and, and see the takeaways. There's benefits yeah. for everything. There's benefits mm -hmm. to the residents by making an adjustment that is more equitable and reflects the need to make these adjustments, drop that 20%, recognize that the higher end of the scale is in market value, and that when people are falling slightly differently because of changes in their job descriptions and in the market comparison, all of that, I can understand it, y'all can understand it. Sometimes it, it, there's a lift to help everyone else understand it, but fundamentally the biggest lift here is when that decision happens, and this is what Skip is gonna criticize me about, but when that decision happens, there's a lift on the part of the person putting the numbers in, and that's Brenda. And mm -hmm. so I recognize that that could be an issue. On the other hand, and this is why I talked to her and Mary about it, I recognize that there's also an equity question. And so I knew whatever came out of the study, there has to be some tough decisions and we have to have the wherewithal to make them and explain them. Yep. Okay. So Raloon, so, I will send an email out. Um, I had sent one out after the finance committee meeting about something else. So I will send an email out either this evening or tomorrow and just ask people to get together and talk about this. Um, I do think, as I noted to the finance committee last night, I do think that when the committees get together and chew on something, a lot of troubleshooting and brainstorming comes out of those conversations that I see very productive answers. So when I send that email out, I'm gonna ask if all three committees, the select board, the personnel board, and the finance committee can meet together to discuss it. The issue for you guys is we may have to adjust a day or something. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a good that sounds like a good plan. I don't know when the finance committee or the select board normally meet, but uh, you know, if we could, we have that seventeenth date, or if there's a better date for you guys that we could all go. That I think that sounds like that sounds like a, a really good. Okay, idea. so I'll push something out either tonight or tomorrow. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you both for coming. I appreciate yes, it. Thank, thank you, you all. John.
Very yeah, nice. it, was, it was good to hear the, the final version. <laughs> it's a good thing yeah, I've heard yeah. it a number of times now because I I'm starting to get it now. <laughs> I didn't get it the first time, but we don't do this every day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to say this is probably one of the best comp studies I've seen that has come down the pike for the town. Um, well, that's good to know. It's one of the most realistic for the steps and everything that I've seen. Uh, some of them that we've had have been very scary, in my opinion. It seems to make a lot of sense, and it seems logical, and and it it jives with what our feeling was before, which was that the lower end of the mm -hmm. yeah. of the steps was just not sufficient and not competitive, and then that the numbers bore that out, and and it, it does. It seems it seems to be a good balance. Yeah. Well, it, the did a really previous good job. Comp yeah, the previous comp schedule was designed that you were hiring less and therefore your steps were bigger because you were learning more. And, and what happened is we couldn't hire anybody at the lower steps because they were so low. And so you were starting people at the higher, you know, at like step three or four, and they didn't have those lower paying years to compensate for the higher steps. And so it was backfiring. That makes sense. You know, um, I'm glad. We so I think this is set that. up. This is set up better than you know the last one we had. And you know, I don't know. It, every, well, it's a transition, and you're going to get a yeah. question no matter what. I know. Um, un uh, unfortunately, we have some data to back that up, and we can see what what needs to be explained. If you really are low on the on the low end, then like you just said, it's hard to hire. But built into it is the growth of learning your position. At some point, you learn your position and you sit in a certain place. And and I've seen that happen with with several people that I've worked with for years here in Deerfield. But that that comes with the expertise of growing in a job. Yeah. And I think it'll be it, it'll be good in terms of if the the finance committee and the personnel board and the select board and we all kind of feel like this is logical and it makes sense and it's good for the town and it's good for employees, um, then that I feel like that bodes well for it it, it it going over well at town meeting, because I think you know if we're all kind of in agreement, it, it, and and can can work out any little pieces that that we want to fine tune, then and then I feel like it will be well received at the town meeting. I agree. Yeah. Okie dokie. Okay. Thank you again, uh, John. I really appreciate you being on for the couple hours here in room, room two, you two. Right this night. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, John. Thank yeah, you. Thank you. It was good to be here. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Good night, John. Good, good night. night. Again. So, David, I sent Lori an email while. Mary started and Lori Busada, and she um, kindly jumped on to answer a couple of the questions that you all had about the Voltrex con contract. Sorry. Hi, Lori. Thanks. Um, sorry, <laughs> I didn't have it on my calendar earlier. No, um, no, no. I didn't necessarily remember to invite you. That wasn't in my brain. <laughs> But when the questions came up, when I think of these things, I try to send emails. So I had sent you an email while the board was um, beginning the conversation in the class comp uh, report. And so you sent me an email back and this is the first opportunity I had to let the board know that you had, were gonna hop on in case we needed to answer some of those questions for the contract. Okay. Um, so a first thing from, from your email, um, Casey, there's, there's two parts, right? There's the Eversource site, site host agreement. And there's, is there any questions about that? Because I think we, yeah, no, okay. Just on the we had a, a thorough discussion about that the first time. Okay, so the Voltrek contract, um, if, let's see, I'm not sure if you were looking at the, the one that he um, modified, the one from the April 14th email. The one that is- yes, April 14th. Yeah, okay. that's the one. Okay, so, you know, I think that the, I can see how the, uh, the pages after the first page are confusing. I told him that we didn't want the, um, 
what are they even called? Ashore. Like ashore. Yeah, yep, that we didn't you. want that. Great. From, from what I've heard um, from oh, David Curry. That was a question that Trevor had was what's yeah. the Ashore thing? And so I yeah. kept reading it. Yeah, so I, I'm actually kind of surprised that he even kept that page in there. Um, but on the first page, so the original contract that we got did say that um, it was valid until, you know, until May of, I guess, last year. So, I, I, you know, I anticipated there might be some changes. And what he said was that um, charge point is not waiving, not letting them waive the activation fee. Right. Um, and so he created this promotional network and activation discount to cover okay. that fee and the first year of the network fee. Okay. That's but great. my um, agreement with, or my, I mean, I don't know that we have a, a written contract with Greenfield Savings Bank, but I think they gave us something in writing. <laughs> and um, I think they gave us an award letter. Okay. So I haven't um, um, actually talked to, I don't even know his name off the top of my head, the person that I initially talked to, but I did reread my letter and I wasn't suggesting to them that they would be fully funding it. I was specifically asking for that, um, that uh, commercial cloud plan, the network fee, because that was something that the grant was not gonna cover. So, right. um, and, and they did um, offer, you know, $1,000 a year for five years. The, the thing that I could talk with um, the guy from Voltrek, Steve Giordano, um, though I'm not sure he'll still be open to it, but he, I could ask um, Greenfield Savings Bank to pay um, that 5,000 upfront so we could get a five-year plan because in the earlier contract, if you bought the five-year plan, instead of paying for it by the year, you got a year for free, but. Um, oh, I see. So I, yeah. maybe he changed it because of the activation. Yeah, he might've, but I, but I don't know for sure. I could, I could ask him about that if we can still get him, you know, five years. So here's my he other question, Lori. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's the, remember we talked about the chart. So how we're charging, and it was something that Kevin brought up a few minutes ago is actually the paying for the charging and how we keep that space turning over. So, uh, so everybody has a chance to use it. Am I, re, am I phrasing that right, Kevin? Yes. No, that, that was okay. right. We wanted to make sure that, you know, people were putting their credit card in the charge. And then if they hung out there for, you know, say they charged for two hours and they hung out there for four, they would be charged for the two hours that they didn't move along so somebody else could use it. And we do that as part of the setup, right, Lori? Yeah. I, um, okay. So, so there's a lot of flexibility with how we charge. Um, so I haven't gotten his latest report, but um, Walter Ramsey, the Montague Town planner has been mm -hmm. um, dealing with, I think they got five charging stations because they're mm -hmm. an environmental justice community. Yep. And yep. they're charging, and I think this is uh, true of some other places as well, um, 30 cents per kilowatt hour. Mm -hmm. So they're directly tying it to your energy usage. Um, which might be the way to go as opposed to just picking a, a certain hourly rate. Um, but as far as I remember in the beginning, we talked about this because we were thinking about having it at the school, how we get them to move on. Right. Um, right. Especially Kevin had a suggestion that. about that. Yeah, okay. I mean, I think that's kind of up above and beyond the actual, the contract, um, but um, I did. I did talk with the people directly at um, ChargePoint about the the amount of energy usage. We can also, and this is what they do at um, what's that place called in North Amherst, Cushman? Uh, no, um, the the new oh development at um, yes. where the Atkins place was, uh, Mill the Mill River no. Mill River District, the Mill River District. <laughs> so we we the mill district the mill district we um you know we check out charging stations <laughs> wherever we can to gather information so they actually split the amount of um power that you get um 
the, the car would, would chart, would, would draw as much as um, seven kilowatts at a time, but they cut it down to three and a half kilowatts between the two um, ports. So, you know, we, you could play around with all of those kind of things if we needed to adjust that. Um, so, yeah, but that, that's stuff that we can adjust in real time. We get a, um, a dashboard. I don't know who would, um, I don't know, you know, we can talk with Walter um, and we can talk directly with, the, with um, Steve Giordano about setting that up and who would, monitor that. I mean, I certainly would volunteer to, you know, be another person, other eyes on it, but we should definitely set it up so that we have a, a cushion um, in addition to, you know, what we need to cover costs. Okay. Okay. But we can adjust it, you know, on a daily basis. So if we find out that, oh, you know, we're, we're not quite charging enough or, you know, I don't, I don't think there'll be a problem and, and, with us charging too much, but no. Yeah. And, and it's just mainly just to have, you know, I, I guess the fee to if they're hanging out there much longer than they need to be. You know what I mean? Like they pull yeah. in and plan on charging for several hours, but it, it's parked there overnight. Nobody else can use it. There should be a, a, a way to charge for that. So there is. OK, to charge for that. OK, that that makes right. sense. Because you know we what I mean? don't like have parking the... fine. Yeah, we don't have the, the staff to give them a ticket or anything like Correct. that. Correct. Yeah, right. So I just screen shared um, yep. the contract itself and I just wanted to ask a couple of questions. So what we're looking at, can you see this, Lori? Yeah, I was actually looking yep. at it on my phone. I know, I, we were all looking at, on, uh, looking at it on our own, but let's show the world what we're looking okay. at. Okay, okay, yeah. Um, so this is a dual port yep. um, EV charging station. This is the one year prepaid commercial cloud plan. Yeah. And it's for, so we're getting two of those. Right. And then the installation or the initial activation configuration. And then this is the network discount that the, Steve that covers put the together. Previous two things. Right. Yep. Right. And so you're looking at 8310. And so here's my question these things, the network multi year pricing. If it's more feasible and more and more less expensive for the town, um, I guess my question for Steve would be: if we need to make an adjustment for that later on, if we did get a commitment to get some assistance for that, we probably could. But right now, that's not clear to me whether we should be agreeing, you know, because it looks like we have it set up here yep. for one year plan. Right. And then the Assure program, when I looked at it the first time, we do we do have to do, if we want to do the Assure, we have to have a site validation. Lori, do we have to have the site validation anyway? No, no. I don't think so. Yeah, I don't no. think so. I think that's, okay. that's part of what they do. Yeah. And so what I would do for this, um, if I were going to sign it tomorrow, I would... I would do a strike through for those things mm -hmm. and then make sure that I'm right about that and then have the, per, you know, sign it, put your name and your signature on it. My only question, and I didn't get an answer from Steve was, are we working on the state contract? It would appear we are, but yeah. I just, that was the only question I had for him uh, because he does mention it. Oh so, yeah. I'm, I'm, um, I'm pretty sure that let's, I, I probably I have an old version of it, contract. but yeah, yeah, okay. that's why that's why I got his name um, to start with because originally I started talking with MAPC um, and they gave me the state contract and then I guess I got um, I heard about Voltrek from um, Dave Purrington at Deerfield Academy, but uh, Montague also okay. worked with Voltrek, so okay. Um, so I think that's what I understood about it. And now that you're here and we've asked a couple more questions, I have a better framework. So I feel more comfortable with it, but you know, okay. it's up to the board whether they want to do that. It, it, to me, it seems fine, you know, moving ahead with what what's on this plan right now, and then we can get a real grasp of it. And I'm sure we, next year we can sign up for a five-year plan if it makes sense. Want to do that? 
Yeah, we don't have to tell Greenfield Savings Bank that we got the first year free. <laughs> we will be kind and let them know. Oh, yeah. For sure. We're very grateful for their help. Um, you and know, we're grateful for their support. Yes. Of, of doing something like this. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Um, yeah. And then so we'll have to work out. Uh, she, uh, I can't remember the woman's name at um, Greenfield Savings Bank was asking me about all the details, but. Um, you know, when we get closer to that stage, as far okay. as like, us, um, you know, some kind of acknowledgement about their contribution, and we can oh, they can absolutely. put that. Yeah, we can. I guess we can make a separate sign, or they can put that right on the. Um, maybe that would make sense, as opposed to putting it right on the charger, though that would kind of imply an ongoing commitment. <laughs> we can work out those details. Yep, we can. Kevin, are you? more comfortable yeah. with it or no yeah no no i think we're all right with that and and i do okay. believe because i think if i went back to uh lori's email she put out on february 16th of this year uh you know we we're talking maybe something to the effect of would support from uh greenfield savings bank right right you know and that could be something that could be put on there and and um as long as they're a supporter, the, the signer sticker will stay there. And, and right. as we have other supporters, they can be added. And as people drop off, they can be removed. Yep. Yep. Sounds good. Um, and the other thing, uh, Lori, because I remember we, we talked briefly about, you know, going through uh, some costs and things like that for the, for the usage. You know, it, uh, the machine, go ahead and putting out a seven kilowatts maximum draw. Um, you know, we put out a, a ballpark price of uh, 25 cents a, a kilowatt hour times seven kilowatts, basically worked out to $1.75 an hour. Um, but again, you know, if, if you can go ahead and, and cushion that in a little bit, so that way you can make sure that it covers all the costs. So if you went to 30 cents a kilowatt hour, uh, yeah. but again, you know, it, that's always going to vary because, you know, you look at your rates and they're continually moving all over the place. So. Right. But, and yeah, um, it's... It is adjustable. And honestly, I, you know, I think people are not going to be, um, if they need a charge, they're going to plug in. <laughs> right. So they're not going to, you know, worry about whether it's 35 cents or 40 cents a kilowatt hour. Um, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I think the whole, this whole thing is going to mean much more if the prices of gas start coming back. So. That's when it's going to be. It's still cheaper than gas now. It's cheaper than gas now. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, yeah, this will be. This is a, um, you know, pioneering. I think one of the reasons yeah. that Kevin was asking is so that we could mitigate some of the costs to the town, since you know we're grateful we're getting grants and assistance from assistance from EverSource and from Greenfield Savings Bank, but eventually, if we have to take on these costs, um, it's it's something that the town, you know, we as town officials make a commitment to do and we have to find the money in a budget. So one right. of those things that Kevin is trying to do is sort of make sure that we identify what we need to pay for upfront. Mm -hmm. And I think we can build in, um, you know, to, to what we charge, we can build in the network fee if we end up paying for it, if the town end up, ends up paying for all of it. Okay. But, but, you know, I do think, um, you know, with its location right next to Greenfield Savings Bank, who knows, maybe we can continue this relationship, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Fingers crossed. Okay. So Casey, if you want me to be on a, a call with Steve um, at Voltrek, I could, or probably it's probably best that, you know, you just get all the questions answered, but um, I- You're assuming I know which ones to answer. Which ones I know that. <laughs> well, about the Assure. I mean, I did tell him yeah. that we didn't want that. So I was kind of surprised that I didn't notice. I didn't look pa past that first page to know, um, okay. to see that. Um, I did. I may um, just send him an email and include you in the email. How's that? Okay, that sounds good. I, okay. I did ask him about um, the final installation because I'm not sure what the final amount was from the like, green communities, but you and I can talk details about that later. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. All right. Thank you. Thanks for all you guys do. <laughs> all your long Thank meetings. You. Okay. Take care. So, so, are you more comfortable with it now that we've had some input from Lori? Since I couldn't answer all those, not all the questions, some of them I get, but. Yeah, yes. Yep. Sure. Want to make a motion to sign this tonight? Sure. I'll make a, I'll make a motion to move forward with the Vault Trek. Uh, 
uh, EV charging station contract as presented. And I will second that motion. Okay, any further discussion? Okay. Hi, members. Carolyn Ness. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Thank you. Motion carried 300. Good. Okay, the next thing on our agenda is the FERCOG signature authority authorization. I make a motion uh, that we um, yep. have a, we authorize, we name an authorized contract signatory for the con construction services bids. Um, this is a change from what we used to do is just give, we would sign one at, you know, at the beginning of the year and that would cover everything. But now they want everything individually signed. We'll make a motion to have Casey or, or Kevin. I, I mean, depending on the contract, right? I mean, yeah, mo most of all the things that they are is for all of my materials. Right. And, uh, you know, anything from gravel to sand to salt to yeah. asphalt, yeah. Um, pipe, yeah, fine. Uh, you pretty much you know, any, any material that I utilize for the season or right. seat for the year. Um, is, is within that contract, you know, to include our fuels too. Does that okay. make sense, Casey? Or can, do they it want? Does this? I think I think if we had more than one person, um, yeah, authorized, right. it's backup in case something right. happens. Okay, so I'll here. say. Um, <laughs> so my motion would include um, authorizing Kevin and and or um, Casey to sign. Okay, I'll second that motion. You okay with that, Kev? Any further discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Hi, Hi Carolyn. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolf. Good. So the next one. Transfer station stickers and bag prices. I was gonna tell you that Kevin asked us to keep it all the same, but since he's here, I'll let him tell you. Um, my, my recommendation is is to stay where we're at at sixty five dollars for the uh, um, for the sticker. Uh, the bag prices would stay the same. Um, we we are definitely one of one of the higher ones in in the the county. Um, if we were to raise any more, I think it would be detrimental um, to the point that we'd probably be finding more stuff on the side of the road. Yeah, uh, I will be honest with you. Our what we're finding on the side of the road has probably quadrupled. Yeah. Um, since last year, uh, we're finding TVs and couches and, and all kinds of stuff. You know, fortunately, some of the other stuff that we we're finding in the past, you know, colostomy bags and things like that have, have slowed down as long and, and as of uh, uh, hypodermic needles. You know, that that's yeah. definitely seemed to have curtailed a little bit, you know, but we still uh, there's still a lot of trash on the side and a lot of stuff that's being dumped in different areas, you know, but <clears throat> as a public announcement to most people, let be advised that the police department has um, deployed 27 um, motion cameras to be able to pick up the areas where most people have been dumping in the past. That's um, great. So, and then there's some other areas that we've identified that could be possible areas. So those areas are now being monitored. Um, and nice. if, if you get caught, um, there's, there's no hand slapping. We're, we're gonna slap you. We're yeah. slap Do you we have hard. enough fines, Kevin, in place? Um, I, I don't know exactly what, what our, our bylaw says is for um, your fine system. You know, unfortunately for me, you know, I'm, I'm a little more aggressive and my way is, is, you know, the thought process of, of oh, well, you know, yeah, sure. I'm, I'm going to get a $25 fine. Yeah, sure. Whatever. You know, if you're going to do something, put teeth into it, make, make it 500 bucks, make it a thousand dollars. You know, you get yeah. stupid, you get caught. Hey, you know what? It's going to cost you out of your pocket. So, mm -hmm. but again, you know, I, I'm, I, I do get a little too aggressive sometimes. So, um, that, that's going to be higher than disposal fee. Right. I mean, it's because it, it's costing us money. You know, it, it's costing the town as a whole money because, you know, once again, the mattresses and, and the couches and the TVs and things like that, you know, it, it's it's those are separate items that cost us more money, especially when they get wet because we pay by the ton. Right. So, um, well, I'm Casey, glad can you just Casey, can you just check and um, see what our fine system is to make sure we have adequate fines in place? Right. Because I, I don't I don't know off the top of my head. My, yeah, my I question can't remember is, either. My I'm question sorry. is is about um, you know, uh, 
it's gotten much more expensive to run our, our transfer station over the last year or so because of recycling. Although I think we had a, a good reduction. Uh, I saw an email from Jay and Amin a little while back that was kind of less than what we were budgeting or correct thinking about before. So I think we're in, in okay shape. I just wanted to wonder what your budget looks like this year. Are we in good shape? Are we winding up with a big transfer at the end of the year for that? For the transfer station alone, you know, and I, you may have transfers for other things, but just right. wondering how we're coming out this year on your budget. I, I think we're going to be okay, um, okay this year, to be honest with you. <clears throat> you know, and and obviously, you know, if, if nobody's ever really have, haven't noticed yet, you know, there, there's a lot of things we're we're trying to get accomplished up there. Yep. You know, we took down all the trees out front, um, you know, because we're we're trying to clean that up. We were trying to go ahead and get a, a sliding gate put in there. We're trying to replace some of the fencing yep. that is actually part of a capital money that I still have. Yes. Um, that was that was appropriated in the past. But yep. I'll be honest with you, right now, anytime fencing. I talk to a fencing company, they oh. say, yeah, sure, June, 2022. And and double um, the cost. Yeah, yeah. Two hundred and thirty percent is is the average cost of what I've been being told. Yeah. So this may be something that that we the, the highway we, we may end up having to absorb. Um, trying to figure out how to make our own rolling gates. You know, yeah. I mean, it's not rocket science by any means. And and but again, this is just one more thing that you know. There, there's only like, basically only like five fine. guys. Right. And, and, but we're still trying to get things done right, try and clean the place up a little bit. You know, mm -hmm. we are taking the, the two areas of where the, uh, uh, the recycling has been, the composting, we're trying to take those areas and we've added our uh, millings to make it a better slope so it drains properly, which also would keep DEP happy with us. Yep. And eventually, um, if, if I can swing this right, because we were able to finagle a paver um, that now belongs to the town that we were able to pick up for like 300 bucks. And, you know, we put a little bit of money into it and we believe that we should be able to do a little bit of paving in there ourselves. So that way, all we have to do is pay for the pavement um, or, or the, the materials on that side. Um, we're also working on the other side, the brush side to try and do the same thing. Obviously we're still trying to, again, try and put in the new gate on so there's an in and an out you know change mm -hmm. our flow there, there's so many things that are happening there yeah. right now but one of the things that that we do need to kind of keep in the back of our mind is is you know we fortunate as the town is we are one of the few towns in the state that is allowed to have a brush dump yeah well our brush dump getting it's getting there it's it's, it's starting to stack up um yeah. and there is a cost that that is associated with that you know granted we have things that we can utilize um that for cover but I still have to pay for a dozer to come in. And usually it's about three days of, mm -hmm. of a person with a, with a bulldozer to be able to go ahead and flatten it out and then and cover the material because that, that is part of our permit. Right. Um, so again, this is an, ad, uh, you know, um, an added cost. You know, unfortunately, there, there's a, a lot of places like, well, like for yourself, Trevor, you, know, you, you just mm -hmm. don't have the backyard to be able to toss all your stuff. Right. There's other people yeah. that, you know, that they, sure. they've got you know, acres of land that they can you know, just dump on their yeah. own. Um, you know, and again, burning brush is difficult, especially with somebody who's a small property because of the yeah. regulations that goes along with it. Um, yeah. But it's something we may, we may, and I'm not saying right now, but this is something we may end up looking at as as a a, um, a charge, right? Um, to be able to help, you know, offset some of the costs because, it, again, as a taxpayer, besides as as an employee, you know, I look at it as like we need to make sure that we're trying to not cause burden upon people financially that are not benefiting from right, the, from the service from the service yeah um and, and i'm very aware of that and i always try to make sure that that we're trying to do the right thing because um like i said i'm a taxpayer too you know and i understand where it's coming from yep okay but to get back to your original thing you know my 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 plan would be to say stick with the original prices um of okay. where you're at with your bags um yep. i would still go ahead and, and and for the seniors give the discount of the small bags you know, yep. one, one, one roll of small bags. Sure. Um, and then just as, as a quick little service announcement, we do have uh, through our grant program um, from DEP, we do have uh, approximately 180 of the uh, kitchen countertop. Composting. Uh, composting uh, uh, composting yep. buckets. Yep. 
um, that will be that will be distributed during um, sticker sales. And okay. we also have some uh, uh, the reusable shopping bags. Great. Because um, we're, we're just trying to find something that we can utilize um, that is a grant for us and a little bit of give back to to the people, um, you know, giving what we can, what yeah. we can and, and not have it hurt everybody. So so those are a couple of things that, that will be available during sticker sales. Uh, first come, first serve. Once once we run out, we're, we're out. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. So and we have not quite set a date yet as to when we're going to start stickers, sticker sales, but it's not going to be like last year where it's not going to be, you know, September, October, it's going to right. be, you know, um, I really like the, um, at the very least near the end of this month, we yeah. need to start selling. So we'll, we will be selling, you know, again, online as they've been doing, you know, when, when town hall opens <laughs> up again, you know, they'd be able to purchase in town hall. And, and because of the, the difficulties for a lot of the people that, that don't, like to go online that don't want to pay the extra money for the um the credit card charges you know we will be um having somebody there stationed at the transfer station for probably at least um the last half of june and probably all of july so you're looking at probably okay. six to seven weeks of somebody being there that you'll be able to purchase a sticker there on site okay um, at, the, at the very least two out of the three days a week is what we're trying to play. Um, but again, you know, we, we, that's an additional person we have to bring on because, you know, again, because we're so busy up there with only two guys or two people, um, you know, we, we, you need the third person to be able to sell a stickers. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So I'll make right, a motion. A <laughs> that's okay. I make a motion to approve the um, sticker prices and bag prices consistent with last year. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Dave Wolfson. Thank Happy you, Gary Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you for sticking around for this whole meeting. Thanks, Kev. Thank you, Kevin. Oh, that was muted. <laughs> muted. <laughs> Part of the job. All right. Thank now you. you Have a great a, night. Now you can put a crown on. There you go. <laughs> Okay, uh, next thing is uh, entertain a motion to close the uh, annual town meeting warrant. I move to close the annual town meeting warrant on May 5th, 2021. Can we, uh, I'll second that motion for discussion. Can, can we, um, we, we can still put something on the, we can, as a select board, we can open and, and, and close and yeah. add something if we need it, right? Okay. Yes, yes. you I'll can. Yep. You can. Yep. I, can I just say one quick thing since it's sure. open for discussion? Yep. At this point, I've added a an article with a proposed change to the capital bylaw to remove the 60 day submission prior to town meeting, as was has been discussed with capital and the finance committee. Okay. Uh, they have a hearing or they have a meeting about that tomorrow. Um, and we do have to have a hearing about that because it's a general bylaw change. It's yep. published for the 19th. Okay. But you added um, it. You added it into the warrant. Oh, the okay. June 12th. Sorry. Yes, I added it into uh, the okay. warrant. So it's. Yeah. I already had a placeholder, um, and yeah. I've given them the language that I discussed with Lisa. Okay. So the there's two articles that relate to changing terms in both the general and the zoning bylaws to a gender neutral reference for the select board. Now, right. you you called yourselves the select board for quite some time. Before I when I worked here before it was still board of selectmen. Yeah. So, that changed, but what bond council has said to the treasurer <clears throat> is that we need to make those things consistent because the vote that was taken for the debt exclusion for the wastewater treatment plant upgrades um, specified select board, but some of what's in the bylaws need to match it. Okay. So there's Sounds two good. articles and planning board will be working on one of them. The select board will also have to have a hearing because it's a general bylaw that's scheduled uh, for the 19th as well. Um, okay. And okay. then we have one more that was an age waiver for a police officer that I added and utilized the language that I received from uh, Chief Paturic and discussed with council. Okay. 
all the zoning bylaws exist as well. They, I had placeholders for all that stuff before this. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Uh, any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Neff. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Motion okay. Three, zero, zero. Okay. Okay, the next thing, sewer abatement policy. So I've, uh, <laughs> this has been too long, right? Yeah. So I've, um, no, I've been working on something here. Let me just read this a little bit to you. Uh, and what I wanna do is send this to um, Casey to maybe wordsmith it a bit and have Barbara review it. Um, but I, I think we're all, um, we're all in agreement, I think, on this, but I'll just explain it here. So um, we have a, a policy for all, all of our residents that we have um, that in the in the winter billing, they they um, they well, at the end of the summertime in the winter bill, they, they don't no one pays more than 125 percent of their last year's winter usage. Um, so uh, and that's, that's for all of our residents. I'll just, I'll just kind of read this paragraph that I kind of wrote. Um, it has been the policy of the Deerfield uh, Sewer Commission that residents are automatically rebated every winter on their summer bills. Uh, the automatic rebate is to rebate each residential sewer user so that they pay a sewer uh, bill based on the water meter readings of no more than 125% of the previous uh, year's winter water usage. This policy is in place to recognize that during the summer months, a resident will use water to wash cars, uh, water the garden, fill swimming pools, etc. And this water usage will not be going down the drain and therefore will not be being pro processed at the wastewater uh, plant and there, uh, therefore should not be factored into the sewer bill. Uh, we, the sewer commissioners, hereby extend this policy to the agricultural farmers. We strongly encourage farming in the town of Deerfield and feel it is only fair to offer the same policy of rebate to our farmers to serve our region with uh, some of the best ag agricultural products in the nation. It is hard enough to earn a profit farming. We recognize that a majority of the water used on a farm is used during the planting months and goes on the fields uh, and crops and not in the sewer system. Uh, while we're always looking for um, a fair and equitable way to, uh, to share the cost of service of the wastewater, we do, uh, we do also have to balance the cost of operating and maintaining our system. When we reduce the cost to some users, we uh, need to cover that, the cost and balance that uh, cost out to all users because we run our system with an enterprise fund. Everyone is aware of the massive infrastructure improvement, improvements that are underway and planned over the next 10 to 20 years that will take um, around 40 years to pay for. Um, so so that, that was kind of one section and that the other option is we would in, entertain um, a separate water meter at, um, as a solution for our agricultural farms only, but, with, um, but there is a self-responsible process that, that um, entities will need to be responsible for um, if a separate water meter is used. Each October 1st, the farmer would need to take a photo um, and note the meter reading for the year and send it, uh, send that information via email to our town clerk. Because the town of Deerfield does not operate our own water system, um, we are grateful for the help and work of the South, South and Old Deerfield Water Departments. Um, they provide water readings uh, to our town clerk um, twice a year and those dates uh, fluctuate. Um, we do not have the staff to go out and read the meters. Uh, the owners are responsible to provide a photo in that meter reading on October 1st and no later than October 15th. So really that this, this policy needs a little bit more, you know, wordsmithing, I think by Casey and reviewed by Barb, but the, but the intent is to, um, to offer the same service that we offer our residents to our farmers um, and that if, if farmers or entities, agricultural entities wanted to put in a separate meter, we don't have the staff and because we're not our own water department, they would need to be um, kind of do the same system Frontier does. We need to make sure that it's not onerous on our, our, our department staff, um, you know, Barb and, and 
Sarah and Jen in the office when they're compiling the bills, it needs to be a, you know, a very simple system where each October we get a photo of the meter. We deduct that number off their total water usage to the town, to the building, um, because there's really one feed into the building, into a property. And they, if they have two meters, one meter is ag agricultural, only one meter is usage for the house. You know, I think that if, if they did a photo, we would deduct that usage off of, you know, off the total usage in there, um, kind of like we, we do for the school system and, and for our, you know, memorial field per se. So that's kind of the system that I have at the moment. And will you know, anybody, any input you all have on that? I just wanted to make sure it was simple and easy. It helped our agricultural, you know, partners in, in the community, uh, but was not, you know, super onerous. So since we have this program and it worked well already for the residents, um, I think we move, move ahead with that. We are not at this time entertaining anybody that irrigates their lawn a separate meter. It's just not, we don't have the staff or the ability to take on that at the moment. There's many different ways that we could run and pay for our um wastewater treatment you know we could charge many different ways this is the system that we've had for the last you know before i've been here in several years uh before that seems to work pretty well at that 125 percent um rate so i'm curious what carolyn and dave think about that or anybody else well, i'm i'm i feel really happy that thank you very much for doing that trevor but also it's very consistent I think that's what's really important. It's just, we have to be consistent and we have to have a basis for being consistent and it, and it seems very fair. So um, I'm, I'm fine with it. I don't know how you feel, Dave. Yeah, it's just a matter of us working with the water districts, you know, we're dealing with two different districts and, uh, and how they want to actually handle it the best for the water usage, um, you know, and how they actually fill it out. So, and how that's sent to Barb. So, um, I don't know if you had a chance to talk to anybody at the water district or not, Trevor. You're muted. You're muted again. <laughs> I think Trevor's having a hard time. No. Oh, geez. I, you know, you hit the mute button and then it mutes and then it unmutes and yeah. Anyways, um, I feel your pain. Yes, I know you do. Uh, no, I have not talked with anybody at the water department since, you know, this was, okay. this would be straight, you know, yeah. a system that we would just do based on our internal information. Um, well, it's, yeah, there's also, also a possibility if they have a dual meter set up, uh, they can charge one agricultural, one for uh, residential. Yes. Uh, so. And, you know, I, there, you know, we talked a bit about, you know, also doing the same policy for uh, industrial. Um, so, I, you know, it's up to you whether we'd want to include industrial in this. I was really focusing on our farmers, but we do have several, you know, um, industrial yes. entities that would take advantage of this as well. I think yep. it's fair if it's fair across the board for everybody. It is what it is. I mean, again, we reduce some cost over here, it spreads out everywhere anyways. I mean, it, it, it costs so much to run this system. It's not like you're, you know, you just, you have to pay for it. These, these are, these are costs and yep. Yep. the total bill. So I would make one suggestion <laughs> yes. that we outline what the, re <clears throat> and, and I was listening to what you were saying, but my brain was sort of thinking functionally. Um, <laughs> sure. The that we outline what we expect to see from people when they want to be able to utilize this functionally. <clears throat> In other words, we want to see X, Y, and Z pieces of paperwork, and it has to come within a certain time period. Yes. So, to some extent, it feels like a policy. So, if you yep. want to send that to me, I can uh, yeah. work with Barb and Kevin and see what we can do to sort of nail it down because. The thing that I noticed when Kevin did his request for abatement for the memorial field watering irrigation, he had a certain process and it was, you know, very quick for him to do it, but because he'd done it for a while. So I yep. think sometimes it's easier if we just say to people, 
do X, Y, and Z and send it here. Yes. Yep. Okay. It may be easier for Barb and her staff as well. Yep. Uh, let's see. Yes, here we go. Okay, I'm going to send that to you now. Um, um, we have one, um, you know, agricultural abatement. I didn't know if we wanted to vote that. Tonight. I'm fine with that. Um, Rather than carry it out two more weeks, because that's, that's been a, a while. A, I mean, that's been since January, I think. That's the one on uh, North Main Street? Yes. Yes. Bloody Brook Farm. Yeah. It, I'm happy to entertain that. Do that for sure. Um, I would um, make a motion then to approve an abatement for Bloody Brook Farm. Um, based on our new policy. I'll second that motion. Okay. Any further discussion? Casey, do you know dollar amount or anything on that that would be able to put it? No. I don't have it on okay. at my fingertips right now. Okay. So I would have to check. Okay. No further discussion. Uh, all those in favor? I Trevor McDaniel. I, Carolyn Ness. I, Dave Wolfram. Another one. Okay, right, next one. Senior Center Tent. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Good luck. Okay, so I'll give you the the good news and the bad news. The the not so good news is we tried to get somebody to come in and help us put this up, and we we called a particular company that I was familiar with. Um that does a lot of work in the Valley. And unfortunately, because it isn't their tent, they aren't able to put it up for us. But we did get some good advice from them. And one thing that they told us to be mindful of, and I, Christine is on here, so she'll, I'm reiterating what I sent her in an email earlier, but it's basically the tent is designed for grass. And I had concerns about that, that I brought to the Board of Oversight a couple of weeks ago. Um, because I was concerned about access and safety and a couple of other things. But essentially, this tent that Waitley bought, thank you, um, is designed for grass. It is clear, so it sort of have a, has a greenhouse design. So it could be warm um, with the sides down, but I think the sides were going to be up, if I recall what Christina said. And yes, it isn't the heaviest tent, so we need to be mindful of the fact that it may, if high winds hit it, it could be an issue. Um, but fundamentally, because we can't get somebody else to come in and do it, I think we need to find some volunteers um, to help us set it up. The biggest problem that I see, and you know, you can shout me down, but the biggest problem that I see is just no matter where we put it on grass, nothing is completely flat. And one of the things that we asked the tent company is if we could rent a floor from them and they didn't have any. So the flat part makes it a question of, you know, stability and access. So that was my concern. But I will tell you as a group, having attended the last BOO meeting, that the BOO is interested in getting the tent up as is um, the senior center director so that we can have people come to the center. But fundamentally, we need to be careful of our liability and the safety of the seniors. So one question, is the tent that was purchased in Waitley, right? Um, Waitley purchased it, yeah. Did they purchase the same size tent, and Christina will know this, did they purchase the same size tent that they that is used for the function every year, Christina? Yes. Okay, all right, That's. I was just curious about that. Um, <clears throat> 60 you know, by 24. Yeah, we've, I mean, I, I, I guess, you know, I'm not a favor of it in that spot just because it is, I mean, it's great for a picnic one day, using it for exercise and stuff. It's super not helpful there. It's just the, the topography of the land is not great, but I don't know what the other solution is. I mean, we could put it over where the two trees were taken down. It is flatter over there, but I don't know if it fits and we've got a couple stumps we'd have to munch up in the, in the meantime. Um, I, I just, maybe we just go ahead and you know find some you know put a call out for volunteers and set the thing up and you know the the school have had tents up all you know quite a bit of the year i know they took them down for a winter because of snow load but 
they've been okay. They've had them out in the parking lot. They've had them, you know, kind of all over the so place. So Bill's the only person I didn't call. <laughs> yeah. So we even asked the tent company if we could rent one, and they were completely booked up. Right. So, I know it. I know. So we, uh, Jennifer, I give her a lot of credit. Jennifer tried to think outside the box on it, and we tried yeah. to troubleshoot it as we were getting information. Um, Yankee tent. It's just we were we were trying to find a way that we could could get an alternative if we could, but I think. The one thing I had asked Kevin about, and he just hopped back on, I had asked Kevin about the stump removal. I don't think we can do that right now. Right. Um, and I had asked him about it right after the boo meeting a week and a half or so ago, Trevor. Yeah. Um, so maybe we just uh, put a request out through the community and then instead of a barn raising, we have a tent raising. And uh, there you see, go. If we, see if we can just get it up and going and find out a way, make sure that it's, you know, there people are indemnified and, you know, no liability. Well, I mean, for from a volunteer perspective, up. we've done this before. Right. We did this when we put the playground up. Right, exactly. Which that kind of thing. Julie will remember fondly. Not really. Yes. <laughs> no. But yep. yeah, because that question came up, that liability question yeah. came up. Yeah, so I think so. let's just put a request out and see if we can get enough help to get it up. See what, okay. See what now, um, is there any way, and I know part of the reason the land is uneven there is because of roots, which big giant like tree roots, that which could be there. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, but <clears throat> is there any way to make it flatter, <laughs> like by one of our whether it's Kevin or it's Waitley or it's Sunderland, one of their high, you know, well, I don't know. I, I don't, I know I'm not making this clear because I don't no, do, I don't are. have a lawn, but. The, <laughs> the only way to do that, I think, you know, if you wanted to do that would be to have a tent next year. We would, we would grade it off the land, reseed it and wait a year mm, for the grass to come. Yeah. That's probably the only way to make it happen. Yeah. And to be honest with you, if you were going to try and do something like that, truly, you probably wouldn't really want it to be grass. You know, I, yeah. I kind of missed out on the beginning. Sorry, I, I was busy right. really doing something else. But I, I was asking you to do a thing. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 walk, I walk by and I heard, and I'm like, oh boy. Uh, you know, I, I'm. I'll be honest with you. I'm not really sure why. On um, it's the everybody's really not on the on board for putting it on the pavement. Putting it on the I pavement is, is the safest place for it to go. Um, you know, you're, you're looking at un, uneven ground, the whole nine yards, but anyway, so even with that being said, if you were to go ahead and, and put something, put it on the grass, you know, like you said, you know, for next year, uh, it's still, I wouldn't make a grass. If you were going to have a dedicated yeah. area, I'd go ahead and I'd flatten it out and I'd put down millings or something like that. And, right, you know, again, you know, cause I'm, I'm still looking at the ultimate safety of, of, of the elderly, you know, people yeah. in wheelchairs, people in walkers, people in, you know, in unground, uneven. Yeah is is extremely it's, it's dangerous you know i, I yeah. watched my mother for years so no of course it yeah of course I, I obviously share that concern um but the problem again is where it's flat is the where the stumps are and i think even maybe those bushes around even if you could remove the stumps which i heard you couldn't but is it, now but the, the well, but anyways anyway there's is a it, roadway going in. That's right, but I yeah. but I thought it would have for this time. It was wouldn't be going. It I was I think Trevor said he didn't think that was happening till the fall. Mm -hmm. Well, so that's at least after summer, anyways. Depending on how the capital comes out. Um, <laughs> and the tent, I tent, I believe Casey said the tent that Waitley um, purchased has to go into grass. Which the, is one the of the fittings right. themselves are for grass. Although I don't know if we could do it in Millings. I never thought about that. Yeah. I didn't ask that question. Yeah. I'm not that smart, Kevin. Uh, so I don't it's, know. It's a question of what our situation is. This is what we have. So, yeah. You know, because I would, you know, that section of the parking area where it's gravel, Kevin? Mm hmm. I don't know if we could put them in there. I don't know what the fasteners look like. I know that Jennifer looked it up and talked to the tent company about it. And when the two of them looked at it on the phone, she was literally on the phone with them and they were both looking at the same picture. The tent company said that it was basically those, those 
items to secure the tent are made for grass. Right. Yeah, I don't know if grass. the gravel, if gravel is one of the same or not. That or not. Uh, but again, you know, that area right there is almost as hard as, as asphalt right now, asphalt. too. So, you know, you, okay. you may be running in the same problem with that gravel being asphalt as one of the same. Um, yeah. You know, I'm quite sure that, you know, the majority of the reason why I think they're probably concerned about is, is usually the, um, the ropes to go into it, you know, uh, those are put into pins and those pins are driven in. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Every year they see that. Uh, um, yeah, very, I, I mean, obviously it's the reality. That's just the very situation. Well, yeah. yeah, but the, I, um, I think the only solution right now is to put that tent up and, and see what you can do under it. And, and right. maybe, and I know well, you need to be very careful. You're going to have the, you're going to have the picnic anyway. So the tent's got to be up for that. Um, right. That. That's why I was mentioning that earlier in the yeah, email yeah. because um, if nothing else, we need a tent for that because that obviously, even if we pushed up somehow and everyone agreed, which I don't know that they would, but say we even somehow pushed up the reopening date of the building, that's something that absolutely can't be done inside. So. Right, <laughs> right. An exercise class, yes, because they're usually there's not a lot of people, and if we had to do it, that you know that's how it was always done before, and I feel like we could do it safely. Um, but yeah, obviously not the picnic. So, well, there's there's so nothing saying that we can't, you know, because we've got that compacting or that vibrating roller. It's not a huge one, but it's a smaller yeah. one. There's mm -hmm. nothing saying that we can't take the area where you feel that underneath where the people would be walking in the whole nine yards. I mean, we could, we could run the roller over that. I can't guarantee what the grass is going to be like afterwards, but you know, at least that area would be a little bit more safer for. Yeah. Uh, the grass is a mess over there anyways, because of people, including me, I'll admit that, that, you know, cause parking is such a problem that park up on there and then the, and the plowing, and, and I appreciate, and I'm not complaining about this. They, they, but they plow up onto the grass because they know people park there. Yeah. So I'm just saying the, well, the grass was shot anyways. <laughs> well, well, you know, since we can't, we won't be able to solve it tonight, but I think we'll at least let's, you know, put a request okay. out to the community and see if we can get some help. Maybe there's people that have had experience putting tents up. The only mm -hmm. other company I could think of was Yankee Tents, but again, they're probably all not going to put up their own a tent that's not yeah, their own. I know. Yeah. I okay. Know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I, I'm that finally getting else? off. So. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Uh, good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. We're open too. It's nine thirteen. <laughs> okay. Now I'm out of here. <laughs> See you, Kevin. Good night, Kev. Kevin. Another right. twelve-hour day. I'm I really appreciate. Yeah, I know it's been a long day. Or fourteen-hour day. Okay, uh, the next oh, thing on our agenda is a pre-town meeting info session of 526. So we had Evidently, initially discussed- we have a conflict. Well, here's the thing. <clears throat> Brenda said something to me last night at the finance committee meeting. Um, she, Kevin and John have a prior commitment and I think it has yep. to do with fire district. It does. So, so they won't be able to be at a pre-town meeting information session. And I think we just need to keep that in mind because however we frame what that presentation is gonna be in terms of budget, um, if there are things that come up that I can't, that we haven't anticipated her and I, or John and I, or Kevin and I haven't anticipated an answer for, we may not be able to answer it right then. So I just want everybody to be aware of that. I think okay. what we could do is if there were questions that um, we had, had not anticipated, then um, we have a one more selectman's meeting before yeah. um, the do. town meeting. So what we could say is that we will answer those that question on the you know the following select board meeting. You know the next. Okay. Week. And then Brenda, okay. we can get the information from Brenda. Most of the stuff is pretty self-explanatory, or you know all, we should be able to mm -hmm. be able to explain it because we've been to enough meetings and um, you know, with the finance. And what we're trying to do is frame it. My idea, and Annalise asked me about it a couple of times. My idea is to make it very simple. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it has to be. But the, yeah. uh, the thing to do, it is critical that people be able to ask questions mm-hmm. on what we are not covering or have not covered adequately so that you can get the information. We can answer it that night or get information the following week to cut down on town meeting time. So, um, you know, cause we, we have a giant warrant. So, yep. and we got to get it done before everybody faints from the sun, if it's sunny out, you know, and lunchtime and all that kind of stuff. So we need parasols. <laughs> anyway, um, I mean, I would- So I, would, I just wanted to bring well, that We've already talked attention. about a date. So yep. I think I think we should still go forward with a date. I don't know how you okay. feel, Dave or Trevor. No, that's yeah. fine. Let's we'll yeah. move forward and try to anticipate any questions ahead of time. Yeah. And at least if the question is answer, asked, we might have the answer by the time town meeting comes around. Right. Oh, exactly. Yeah. So. Yep. yeah. Okay. I just hate changing the date because we've been announcing the date right along. Yeah. yeah. No. So let's just reiterate. It's going to be the twenty sixth, which is a Wednesday. At six, right, Carolyn? <laughs> yes. Well, I, unless it doesn't work out for people, but I, you know, I was trying to be consistent Fine. with our select board meeting. Yep. Generally, we start at six o'clock. So. Yep. So that way, hopefully, you know, we're done before midnight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I think what we do is we frame it, and that's what I had said to Anna Lee: is we frame it a certain way. And if you want to start with ZBA, that's fine. Um, although it may be worthwhile to follow the the flow of the warrant. Yes. Um, I think one thing that we used to do is a slideshow. And I learned in Ashfield that when you put that slideshow together, you really put it together with your talking points so that the person who's doing the slideshow actually has the talking points in front of them. And then, you know, it'll lead to questions. And there's a point where you can stop and let people ask those questions. But if we keep it simple in terms of the budget, it should give us a little more time because I think there's going to be more questions about zoning articles yeah. and general bylaw changes. Yep. Okay. Do we need to deal with the redistricting at the moment? They're just advising us that there's just going to be redistricting. <laughs> and that they're taking questions and comments. So you can reach out and okay. and make those comments. I was I've been watching the news on it and I'm not really I don't, sure what kind of questions we should be asking. Um, I think the question mainly I saw Secretary Galvin. Mainly the question is, are we losing? Are we, we're, we know we've lost people in the state, but is it really going to shift our district? And so right. if I it's think, not going to shift the district. I'm OK. But yeah. And some of that information is available on the Secretary of State's website. OK. I don't have any information about ARPA. I was waiting for something to come in today and I didn't see anything. Okay. But I'll let you know what I get. Can you just put it on the agenda for the next two time? Yeah, we'll you, just talk we've about it. We've got to be able to just, have it. We are the ones that decide um, how we want to spend the money. So I want to make sure we have some discussion on that. I think we should invite finance and, and capital and stuff because we've gotten some questions about that, especially last night at the finance committee meeting. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's so I... Let me just segue into the question that I was going to ask you. I've asked you individually, but I'll ask you at the meeting. Um, Finance committee is asked to have a meeting with capital and the select board on the 11th at five, which is next Tuesday. And really, so they can, we can do some brainstorming and troubleshooting on the capital plan and how we're going to pay for it. We identified some, and we had talked it through at the hearing, but we really looked at it because Julie took the Excel spreadsheet and sort of made some changes so people could see things more easily and identified some of the things that we can adjust so that capital isn't so onerous. Like, for instance, we had $20,000, and Kevin's going to kill me because he's going to hear his name again. We had $20,000 to Kevin's budget so he can do a lease for the Wacker Newsom that he's been looking at. Yeah. But then we don't have to come up with $105,000 like that and we can spread what we have for requests with what we can find for money um you, you for instance said- the website that can change from a forty-eight thousand dollar ask which it already has to spreading it over a period of time and contracted services um so you said may 11th at five o'clock may 11th at five all right it's in my calendar 
Um, hey, uh, may I, I sent the email out last night. I haven't heard back from Jack or anybody, but I'm going to make my put my plug out there tomorrow at the Capital Investment Planning Committee meeting. Want to go over the mail list? <clears throat> I did give you, so in your mail, I gave you the notices for the upcoming hearings yep. for next meeting. Okay, hold on. And so uh, let me just draw your attention to one thing. The, so you've got, next week we've got the Can I just hearing ask? for the bylaw change for personnel board. And that's really to add Juneteenth Independence Day and change Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day, which was the recommendation from the personnel board. Okay. And so um, that's at six. Can can you just post, I know you, I didn't mean to, I know you just skipped it a little bit, but the election results, can you just uh, post on our webpage? I've, I've gotten a couple of inquiries and said that it was not posted on our webpage. Oh. Ta town okay. website. Should it should be right on the front because oh, I just yeah. looked at it a little while ago. Oh, that's okay. what I thought. Thanks, Alex. Thanks. Well, yeah, no, I had gotten phone calls this morning, so all right. No, you you were re elected. Yeah. Oh, no, I know. <laughs> I wasn't worried about that. Uh, and so then you have a hearing on body art regulations. <clears throat> yeah it came up last year and then COVID happened and yep. it didn't well we we remember we were trying to substitute the boss we took the verbatim almost from the northampton uh body body art bylaws because they were so good except the only thing that what got changed was the, the a part about you know, people doing the eyebrows, you know, yep. um, yeah, micro, micro blading, the micro blading. And so um, they changed their bylaws to include the Boston micro blading. And so the copy that we had hadn't, um, hadn't take hadn't done that yet. So what we wanted to do was just substitute the Boston micro blading section to the Northampton sections and, and, and make sure the numbers were correct. And yep. then, then we were just going to um, have the public hearing to do that. We have somebody that's interested in moving into town, but because of COVID it was put off, but yep. the person who wants to come back. So, or, or we're still is interested now. Mm -hmm. So we need to have our bylaws in order so that um, we can offer a license. So it's an actual board of health meeting. Yeah, it's a board of health hearing, yes. Yeah. Um, and so now these all have times and they're yeah. 15 minute increments, but just because you post the time doesn't necessarily mean that the time that the hearing has to open at that time. Okay. I'm just warning you that we had to give them times. Okay. So it may be that you want that you don't make a decision on the body art regulations right away. Mm -hmm. Um there's also a class two use car dealership license. That's at the next meeting on the 19th. And so speaking of gender neutral terms, we have to, because we have general bylaw changes, we have to have hearings, i.e. personnel board and the gender neutral change in the general bylaw from selectmen or board of selectmen to select board. We didn't we didn't do this a couple no, of years. No, you guys I think we just took a you vote. You voted it yourselves, but it needs yeah. to change in the bylaw. Okay. I okay. asked the same question. Yeah, we didn't like, do a hearing right. on it. And so we have to so I set the hearing up. It's I don't know how how long the hearing will take, but it's really we need to give the opportunity for the public to comment on that. It sure. would be consistent at the recommendation of bond council to do this. And so this, this is what the treasurer was talked to me about and council bond council had talked to her about. So 
our own town council is, has come up with the two draft warrant articles, which I mentioned earlier. Um, and the language is what would be discussed at the hearing next week or next meeting. No one should have any objection. <laughs> nope. It's a gender State neutral that. term. A lot of towns have <laughs> yeah. had to do it. Right. And just be, and we, we need want it for, to do it. Yeah, we, we want do, to. but we need it for our USDA to. right consistency. Yeah, we already the did it. The vote. So, yes. I, I mean, anybody that's already complained about that can complain again, I guess, but yeah. they can. It's already, it's already been done. Yep, we want it that way. Okay, Casey, any other updates? Um, we had some conversations. I've been working with. Chris Curtis on some of the tree box things. And it was funny, we had a conversation with a business and property owner in town. And it's something that I've heard before, but I wanted to bring it to the board because I promised him I would. And we really need to start nailing down a coordinated vision for downtown. Hello. Because ugh, I know we've talked about it. I know I that you, to... we've started to make inroads in pulling these different things together. We need and to we that. may have opportunities with ARPA that we didn't have before. Um, but it really, I wanted to bring home the point that, you know, in my conversations walking around <laughs> town and, and, you know, figuring out the tree box solutions, this has come up with more than one person. And I wouldn't, I would be disingenuous if I didn't bring it to you as a town administrator, but also as a person. And hopefully somebody will hear that I had this conversation and, and that to, I'm sharing the information I got. We need to complete the contract with Berkshire Design to get moving on that. I think we need to get the funding for that though. That's one of we the reasons it. I've been watching the ARPA we have stuff. It. We have the funding for it. For the town common and for the Leary lot, we don't have a coordinated one. Yeah. That's part of the reason we need to talk about capital. No, I, I think we have funding for it, but all right. I'll, how you, I thought another, I'll talk to Brenda tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah. I'll talk to Brenda tomorrow. I'm all pretty right. sure we, I'm pretty sure we did, but I don't know. Maybe not. I'll go back and look and talk to Brenda. Did we keep any public? Is there uh -huh. any public still hanging on at 930? Yes. For comment, two people. Oh, please. Any comment? <laughs> Any public comment? Trevor. <laughs> no, I'm like, please, if anybody has anything to say, I'm just, I'd be surprised oh. if anyone, anyone hung on that long. <laughs> no public comment. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, we were supposed to fill out that survey, Casey, isn't it? Oh, stop. <laughs> no, it's three questions. I forwarded you a survey. Um, oh, from the fur cog. I don't know if it can wait two more weeks. Uh, I don't hold on. I don't remember a survey. I'm sorry, Carolyn. Nope. If you can't find it, it's okay. But <clears throat> I think I just um, sent it to you. I sent it to you tonight. I'll make a motion to oh, wait a allow, allow uh, Carolyn and Casey to work on the survey. There no. you go. Yay. Dave and Dave. Oh, that's right. Dave. It's Dave. Don't give me that. <laughs> David. Isn't it nice, Carolyn? Yeah. <laughs> Pass the door. I think they're enjoying that way too much. <laughs> yes. I'll make a motion to adjourn now. Yeah. Let Dave and Casey. I authorized Dave and Casey to whatever survey it was. Oh, I know it was um, it was uh, cybersecurity. Technology and oh, cyber absolutely, Dave. That. I'll second that motion. <laughs> any further discussion? I don't hear any. All those in favor? I'm Jerry McDaniel. Hi, Carolyn Ness. Hi, Dave Wolfram. <laughs> All right. Have a good evening, all. Yes, yes thank you. Thank you. And Bye -bye. welcome to the chair. Yeah. Thank yes. you. Yes, congratulations. Thank you, Alex. Thank good you, evening. Alex. And Thanks, thank guys. You Bye. Thank Night. you. Let's go, to, let's go to bed. Yes, yeah. let's go to bed. <laughs>